Coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Hitchcliffe! <laughs> Who's ready for the best fucking night of their lives, huh? It's a red band, everybody. Hey! hey! We're here. You did it. You're at Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world, brought to you by Talkspace, Squarespace, and Freeze Pipe. How about a hand for the best damn band in the land, huh? That's the great on the horns, Carlos Sosa, Raul Vallejo, Fernando Castillo. It's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums, Matt Muling on the electric guitar. John D's on the keys right behind me. And of course, the great and powerful D Madness on the bass guitar, everybody. Before we get started tonight, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made it all possible for you. The Sunset Strip Comedy Club in Austin, Texas is now open. Check out Red Band's secret show every Thursday. Go to sunsetstripatx.com for tickets. Who's ready to start tonight's fucking episode, huh? Well, well, well. As you may know, I book every single episode of this show. This one has been not months, but many years in the making to get our two guests at the same time. How lucky are we? Two of the all-time greats. Ladies and gentlemen, our guests tonight are Dave Attell and David Spade. <laughs> You're in it tonight, motherfuckers. Dave Attell, the new special Hot Cross Buns on Netflix. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Welcome back, Dave. And there's no better place to pitch it than Austin, Texas. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hell yeah. You had an amazing weekend here. I, w I came to your show last night. It was unfucking believable. Truly one of the best in the world. Mm. Well, you know what? Next time you stroke me, please. Use some lube. All oh, right, here we go. Oh, wow. First joke of the show. <laughs> Boom. I love it. David Spade, your first time on the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Austin. Welcome to Thank Kill you. Tony. The Superfly podcast with Dana Carvey available yep. everywhere. Yep. But tonight you're at Kill Tony. Right. I think I went in the wrong room, but... <laughs> it's supposed to be a traffic school. Um, no, thank you for having me, and this is going to be a great seven hours. I cannot wait. <laughs> yes. 
We're going I'm ready long to tonight. hear some jokes. We are going long tonight, and lucky for us, over two hundred innocent souls have <laughs> signed up wow. for the opportunity. Two hundred plus, over two hundred. Okay. They're all piled in at a bar next door. Uh, the great poor choices here on Sixth Street. And they've probably made some poor choices tonight uh, because some of them are wild. Anything can happen. They get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. And that interrupts them and then I interview them. We find out more about them and what they could be talking about or should be talking about. And that's how that goes. We're pre-pooling the first name. And while they go wrangle that person from across the street, we will start with one of our esteemed regulars, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you are fans of the show? No. Well, as you may know, Hans Kim no is way. taking a little vacation right now. And we have had a thunderstorm of a new regular, absolutely force of nature, a cold-blooded assassin. Ladies and gentlemen, kicking off the show with an uninterrupted 60 seconds. I present to you the great and powerful Casey Rocket. Tell me something, girl. <laughs> Very cool, hell yeah. All right, that was actually pretty good. Folks, a lot of people say, my body, my choice, but I always say, somebody should be on The Voice. I'm a very good singer. Okay, cool. <laughs> Getting real. Uh, I'm starving. Can I get a People's Temple, please? Hell yeah. It's like a Shirley Temple, but Jonestown style, so it's pretty cool. It's where they crush up a bunch of Vicodin and put it in a cup of Flavor Aid, and instead of dying, I live for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Tell me something. Cool. Hell yeah. Get real. I used to swallow grapes whole until I was 12 years old. Um, and uh, <laughs> so like three times a week, I would, <clears throat> I would choke on grapes. And because <laughs> that's how kings would eat grapes in cartoons. They'd have a big bushel of grapes. So three times a week, my mom would run in my room and be choking on grapes. And it's like Don Vito on Viva La Bay. And, and uh, she, she'd go, you're not a king, we love you. You're not a king. And I was like, love means nothing when it seeps from the lips of a harlot. And I just, thank you, I'm Casey Rocket. All right, boom. One minute, 15 seconds from Casey Rocket. Another unbelievable performance. Absolutely weird as hell. I love the in the entrance tonight. The old man turned into young man uh, maneuver. <laughs> it's like a Willy Wonka thing. Is that I was trying to do like when Willy Wonka walks down the street and oh he can't walk. He's so scary and I'm young. It was me. I'm young. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't pick that up. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, a force of nature. The grapes thing. I mean, where? what is your writing process exactly? <laughs> Most of the time, I'll just remember, oh, yeah, I used to swallow grapes whole. <laughs> I was like, I guess that might, maybe that's funny. And it's kind of funny, yeah. Ah. No, <laughs> it is. True. It's definitely funny. I've also noticed that you sing the, a part of a new song every week, and I love it. Is that Thank a you. thing? Like, how do, you, uh, how do you decide what song you're going to kind of sing? Um, listening to my heart and uh, <laughs> trusting, <laughs> trusting my managers and my agents and, uh, <laughs> you know, down the grapevine, they kind of tell me what they want to pump up the charts. So it's, uh, it's a Nashville thing. It's a part of the Nashville scene. So, okay, big Nashville crowd. <laughs> I love surprising. it. You we're just on the road this weekend with the great William Montgomery. How'd that go? Where'd you guys go? We went to Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Tacoma. Yeah, did some, did some shows. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, me and William, big riffs. It was cool. It's cool to meet these guys. I was going to say, it's really good to meet you, but David, I, we've already met. Do you remember when we met? Yeah, I think you were my busboy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you might not remember, so I brought some pictures of times that we've hung out before. Oh, uh-oh. We've seen this before. Casey has a, uh, right. a, a partnership with uh, Kinko's yeah. or Walgreens print shop. These are, uh, me and David, we've been friends for years. That was us with the Mucinex guy at oh. the L.A. Dodgers game. Uh, 
<laughs> he was so weird. He was, he was so weird. Got very slimy. Yeah, that was kind of cool. And <laughs> he is wearing the same sunglasses tonight. <laughs> the same look. That's my look, man. Just a couple guys taking in the ball game. Yeah, it's a good time. We called it an early night, and then we went home, and the space shuttle Challenger exploded. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That took me off guard. <laughs> Something romantic gonna... about it, though. <laughs> That's not how you want to end any night at the ballpark. No. And so, so we're watching it, and uh, <laughs> it's still, it's still <laughs> happening. In it's the morning, happening. we stayed all night. I love that sometimes Casey can't decide which one of two pictures he wants to use, so he uses both. <laughs> uh, just pushing the story along. We're watching it, and. Uh, then, you know, we're kind of taking it out. <laughs> you, you loved it. You know, just, oh, my God, we couldn't take our eyes off of it. Amazing. And, uh, so we start, oh, you faced the camera on that one so everyone could really see that he was watching it. That is incredible. <laughs> we, uh, you don't remember any of this, David? No, it feels a little AI, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't mind it. I didn't know. Yeah. Then we decided we were going to stop it from ever happening again. We put it, we suited up commando style, and we shut down NASA from the inside. Wow. Well, those were the we days. Talk yet or not? Yeah, okay, anytime. Yeah. The question part. No, oh, yeah. Well, it's good that you're used to doing this because when you're for your um, next gig, where you're holding up a song, we'll sing for food. I think that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I thought this one was kind of fun because it's the ending of Fight Club. So we're holding hands and we're like, "I met you at a very strange time in my oh, life." Oh, the Mucinex guy is also in the corner of that one. <laughs> is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's down there. He couldn't yeah. shake that dude. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. He's a crowd booger. <laughs> David Tell, you ever seen anything quite like a Casey I've never seen a, a guy so lonely with a laser printer. I never... <laughs> are we allowed to talk? Yeah, you got to wait, David. Five fucking big ones go by. By the way, has anything good ever come out of an envelope like that? Can I say that? <laughs> now how you doing now? Fucking yeah. summons. Wake up, David. I'm here. <laughs> Casey, you're a goddamn superstar. Thank we you. absolutely love you. Thanks for getting Casey, this show started you, again. That's how it's done, you. ladies and gentlemen. A new minute every week from the newest regular, Casey Rocket. Casey, let's do it again sometime. And we found that everybody, Casey, Cam, everyone you've... Oh, look, it's the lovely Heidi, everybody, with some liquid deaths and some American spirits. The whole kit and caboodle tonight. Unbelievable stuff. Our first bucket pool is behind the curtain and ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, anything can happen. Could be the next superstar of the show. Could be an insane person. Anything can happen. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Caleb Barge. We're going to meet them all together. Caleb Barge, everyone. How's it going? Cool. I was raised really religious, and uh, my parents put me in a private Christian school, and there they taught me that we were created by God, and we did not evolve from monkeys. If anybody here believes we did not evolve from monkeys, I want you to go home and Google foot job porn. Have you seen that shit? Foot job porn? A girl jerking a dude off with her feet? That's the most monkey shit I've ever seen in my life. It frees your hands up to eat bananas. I found the missing link, it's footjobhorn.com. Uh, my dad was a really religious one. He was, he did not like gay people <laughs> at all. He told me this once, he was like, Caleb, the way that gay guys have sex, it's disgusting. They do each other in the butt, that's where poop comes from. I was like, dude, they're not doing each other while they're taking a shit, right? Every hole in the human body has a non-sexual function and when it's not doing that function, that's when you're supposed to stick your penis in it, right? <laughs> you don't try to get a blowjob from somebody eating a sandwich. You wait <laughs> without eating the sandwich, right? Yes. You guys were awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Caleb Barge, solid minute. He came, he came in a little under. Yeah. Didn't he? I didn't hear the meow. No, yeah, it was right there, 59 seconds. Yeah, nailed it. David Tell. I would say, what's your name again? Caleb. Of course it is. Now. <laughs> Yeah. I thought you were an Ezekiel, but uh -huh. Caleb, 
it was, first of all, it was calming and refreshing, kind of like a pile of burning books. And I think um, <laughs> your dad will back me up on that. All right. I liked it. Yeah. I thought the energy was just right for the situation. Yeah, it was good. Really solid. Christian Appreciate school, that. monkeys evolution, foot job porn. Dave, you ever watch foot job porn? Uh, where I come from, we call it river dance. <laughs> now, <laughs> come on, y'all. Sorry. I'm getting ready for the little room upstairs. <laughs> uh, Caleb, how long have you been doing comedy? 13 years. 13 years. And before that? Huh? I before bet the under on that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding, Dave, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Caleb? I work from home. I'm a project coordinator. Mm. Okay. You would know this. What time does the Bucky's open? Now, the Bucky's <laughs> over? I don't know, 6 a.m.? No, it's 24 hours, right? That's right, yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. No doubt about it. That's where you can watch all the foot job porn you want, in the bathrooms. What kind of projects are you coordinating uh, from home? Uh, so, tech, like tech jobs and stuff like that, like big Fortune 100 client companies wow. want to uh, like update their mapping software and stuff, so they contract it out, so I just run it. Okay. Yeah. What do you do for fun? 13 years in stand-up comedy. Where, are, where did you do the 13 years at? Uh, New York City. Wow. Yeah. Do you live here now or are you just Yeah, visiting? I just moved here. December. How long ago? December. December. Yeah. W what do you love about Austin? Anything stand out to you so far? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I got really tired of New York City. I mean, I like just, it's, there's, you can actually walk around and there's not a million fucking people. Mm -hmm. it's, mm. it's, I really enjoy that. And uh, the food's great. Yeah. You know, I really like it here. So. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you do for fun, Caleb? Tell us something about when your wild side when you're not doing stand-up. Uh, I did uh, some traveling the past few years. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I went what? to Costa Rica. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I got a vasectomy there. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. yeah. <laughs> was that your idea of the courts? <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> Definitely mine, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the place. The old Costa Rican vasectomy. Yeah, it was 250 bucks. I put it on a credit card. I was just like, hell yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you weren't scared? It didn't, it didn't seem like 250 was a little low? I don't, it, well, I'll do anything not to have a kid, you know? Like, and also, getting far as way of using condoms. Condoms suck. I'd rather just do that. But yeah, it was, it was actually a very pleasant experience. The doctor told me a joke before he did the operation. It was good. Were you awake during your... Yeah, I was awake the whole awake? time. Yeah. What was the joke that the doctor told you? Okay. So he, he, said something, he said it in Spanish, and then the nurse translated to me. And she was like, he said you're now like the guy, the sugar that doesn't make women fat. And I was like, that's a pretty good joke for a doctor, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's fly so, him in. So yeah. did you get the... <laughs> Sounds like he's got a tight one joke. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so when you got back to the States and shout out that heroin, what was that like? Shout out the heroin? <laughs> it was good. What happened back Deep there? madness. We good? Sorry. That's Sorry. okay. <laughs> he's blind. You can oh, get away with it. I thought that was it. the bonus round sound. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Caleb, one last question. What's the, what's the thing that we would be most surprised to know about your entire life history? other than a Costa Rican vasectomy from a guy telling you jokes for $250? Um, I don't know. Uh, you have a weird childhood or anything like that? Yeah, Christian upbringing can do that, yeah. Are your parents but, still super Christian? Uh, my mom is still, but she's cool. Like my dad, me and my dad don't really talk. When's the last time you talked to your dad? Like four years ago. And how did that conversation go and end? It was on Father's Day, it was weird. Tell us about it while well, he's here now. So, <laughs> so he got, so he's, he's very conservative, and I, I went out and I marched for Black Lives Matter when I knew before it was bullshit, you know? And, uh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. They fucking, they scammed people. Yeah. Like, That's a YouTube channel over. Yeah. From here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, yeah, he just like, he, he judged me as soon as, I, it was Father's Day, I called him up and he judged me immediately. And I just was like, I'm tired. What did he of say exactly? Can you remember what he said? Yeah, he was like, this is fucking hilarious. Uh, he was just like, uh, you weren't out marching, were you? I was like, yeah, it's the first thing he said to me. And I said, I, and he was like, this music's great. And he was like, he was like, oh, I didn't think you were smart, you were, 
he basically said I was dumb for marshalling. And I was just like, all right, well, happy Father's Day, Dad. And it's like, this is weird. Wow. Yeah. It's been four years since you called him? Yeah, I just was tired of that shit. Can we get no, a phone unlocker yeah. up here? We have his phone. Do you want to call your dad and tell... Can, I, can we call your dad and... Oh, boy. How many of you think we should call his dad right now? I've got his old number. Just when you when you hit when you when, I, when I you don't, hit, I don't have his number, but I'm gonna try. Yeah, just let's keep try. dialing. Yeah, let's just let's just guess. Whoever picks up, call him dad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put it on speaker and put the butt of the phone up to the microphone. Just speaker, the butt of the phone, the bottom. There you go. Right to the tip, not the side. Do you have a hard drive in there? What's hanging from the bottom of your phone? It's not even ringing. It's ringing. Are you out of data? You have daddy and data issues? Is it on speakerphone? Yeah. Tony. It's not. You've taken this show to a new level, buddy. <laughs> Watching a guy make a phone call. Awesome. It's incredible. It's live. Okay, no, no, don't put the mess voicemail up there. Okay, well. There you go. <sighs> there you have it. Looks like he still hasn't forgiven. I guess you'll have to connect with your. I guess you'll just have to connect with him through QAnon. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think he's into that shit actually. Yeah. I love it. Well, we tried, Caleb. Uh, sign up again. Solid minute. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, here's a little joke book. Actually, you know what? Here's a big joke book. Awesome. There you go. It's good. It's good. Caleb Barge, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how it starts. Congrats, Caleb. All right, we got another bucket pull. We're gonna keep it moving. Make some noise for your next comedian. 60 seconds uninterrupted for J.P. Lambiase, everybody. J.P. Lambiase. Here comes J.P., fuck yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell from the lights, but I'm Italian. Uh, <laughs> all right, the truth is I was, I, was, uh, I was bought by a couple of Italians, okay? Uh, and that's the thing, though. I see a lot of, uh, see a lot of white people buying uh, Asian babies, okay? It's, it's true. My parents bought three. But I don't see a lot of Asians buying white babies. Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, why would Asians spend money on a C student? <laughs> My, uh, my girlfriend, actually, she cheated on me with another Asian. Yeah, uh, it's, it's cool. It's not her fault. She said she thought it was me. <laughs> Turns out it was Hans Kim. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. Is that a minute? That's good. All right. Nice. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. He gets extra points for doing his time. Yeah. Exactly a minute. Uh, welcome to the show, J.P. Lambiase. Is that how you say that last name? You do not look like a Lambiase. Yeah. It was. It was a friend. It was Italian name. They made it French, so it's Lambiase. Because my wanna they wanted to get Asian. over here good, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Which coast did they arrive from? Yeah. New York. Well, I'm, You're really Italian. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, I was actually raised very Italian. Hey, hey, what up, huh? Whoa, get a test. Now. <laughs> so your parents are what? The mom is Asian? Calabrese. Uh-huh. Dad's Sicilian. The okay. grandparents are racist. <laughs> okay, but seriously, that what in. kind of Asian are you? Uh, I'm South Korean. I'm not the other part. Right. Good. Great. <laughs> Great. So, JP, how long have you been on stand-up? Uh, I, I started in 2010. Okay. Wow. Another veteran of the game. Yeah. Two people, 26 years of experience between the first two bucket pulls. That's incredible. 13, it's funny that 13 years and they lean at the tape at a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they barely I, I'm not good. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> no, no, come you on. Did, you did pretty good. Come You're on. also you did not fun. Italian, so yeah. Yeah, there's a lot exactly. of that. not things I, happening I, with you. I hustled my way through it, you know what I'm saying? No, you did okay. good. You did good. Wait, are you, you're not Asian, or you are? Uh, I was re I, like two weeks old. I was adopted, like two okay. weeks old. I don't know. Uh, oh. I don't know stuff. I Evidently, don't... you don't know how to do laundry. So I really, <laughs> yeah. 
Come on, it was just sitting there. Yeah. I thought that would be you, buddy. Yeah, I know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. Those are something else, those pants. Those I don't know how you pants. got into my stockpile of pants today. That's but weird. Uh, got them from your laundry. That's the joke I just made, Red Band. <laughs> Very good. I mean, you do have some awesome calves. I mean, the crowd will back me up on it. Those are dynamite calves. It's a cultural thing, I assume. I think we found the guy that kills people at the lake because <laughs> he doesn't want to get his pants wet. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Good it is that's incredible. Great. Is it true that uh, your girlfriend really cheated on you? I'm in a legal battle. She's suing me. And uh, I, the lawyer said, uh, none of that's true. Um, do you just lie about everything? Because it's like, it fucks up an interview. The, you're not helping the case, though. Uh -huh. Cause like she's calling me a liar, and now like Tony, you're calling me a liar. Uh oh. Uh, and this wait, this is a, like this is not live, right? You're not live. Yeah, three weeks to two weeks. Okay. What? I just gotta call him. What's going on, JT? Yeah. <laughs> you signed up for the show. I didn't realize that we had law crazy. issues with you. Don't or do I don't know what to avoid. I don't, don't know do anything you. crazy, buddy. You need to wear less tight pants. It help blood flow. I mean, you're kind of like a Hulk below the waist. I mean, I could see <laughs> getting angry. This yeah, is, I've never gotten as much validation in one night. Um, what happened was uh, we, had a, we did a YouTube together and she, uh, we separated and then she, I didn't want to work on the channel anymore and she sued me. So I decided to just drive from Orlando to Austin, Texas for the only reason to be here. Like this is why oh, I'm here, yeah. guys. Like this is, this is why I'm here. Wow. Wow. And here Not you, to be pandering, but like, right, this but, is why I'm here. But here you are, and you're in it right now. I'm, I'm you're in, in it. it. This is like incredible. I'm not going to sleep tonight, and I'm just so happy and fortunate to be here. I, I really am. Okay. Wow. So you've seen the show a lot. You know where you're at. I, I, so uh, you're in yeah. the interview part right now. And last Wednesday, we locked eyes when you did your show with Joe Rogan. It was great. Okay. You asked me what Asian I was, and I'm just like, oh, he looked at me. And then today, you walked by me. It was amazing. I didn't want to acknowledge it, because I've got to be Are cool. Are you gay? Like, a little bit. Okay. I, that's, that, yes, that was Maybe my Maybe a lot of it. Yeah, okay, a lot. All right, yeah. Was, uh, you, was your girlfriend a girl? Uh, she's suing me because I'm gay. Like, that's actually part of it. Is that true? I mean, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter, JP, guys, right? JP, matter. JP, stick with me over here. Okay, okay, sorry. Are you really being sued by a girl? I'm being sued by a female. Right. And you used to do a YouTube show with her. Did you guys really date? Did you we guys did for sleep years. together? Ten for years. ten years. Ten okay. years. Okay. So fiance, we go. fiance. Okay, we're getting closer. She was your low main squeeze. She so you, she so put you, the low main in low maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> so you said, heck, I'll just take her pants and get out of town? Yeah. Is that really? <laughs> <laughs> These are mine. I paid for them. Another YouTube-related breakup. Lululemon, baby. Incredible. So what was your YouTube That's show about? Uh, food. We, uh, uh -huh. Healthy junk food. No, yeah. Actually, I shouldn't actually advertise it. I actually remember you from that. Oh, I thought dude. you were on the show before. I'm like, I know this guy. Yeah, yeah. but I don't, I don't do that anymore, and I don't... Prom <laughs> legal. Um, <laughs> hey! I love it when it people going? sign up for the show they can't talk about anything. I will, yes. I'll actually, let's, let's just fuck it. Let's just do it. Um, uh, yeah, it's a food channel, and then I, I went rogue. Well, she went rogue, and then I went, I went rogue, and then I lived in uh, uh, my car, which is really fun. Like, trust me, it's like, I'm like, uh, you know, I like living in small spaces. I don't know what it is. Uh, and then uh, I, I came here, and then, and then that's it. That, yeah, okay, good. That was a horrible story. Anyway. I can't believe you, you leaked that pertinent information. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was... <laughs> Tony, yeah. I think we found our new host of the Golden Globes right here. <laughs> Welcome aboard, son. This is it. This is it. Either that or he's the new SNL fucking cast member after uh, <laughs> Shane gets canceled or whatever. Um, JP, uh, before I let you go, what is a special skill or talent that you have? I was a uh, professional laser tag. Really? You look more laser wax to me than the tag. 
You are very hairless. Do you shave your legs? I got that throughout all high school and middle school. I got bullied a lot because of, honestly, because of this perfect dolphin feet I got. Like, I just don't, yeah, there's great. no uh, hair. I just don't have the follicle growth on that. Um, I do have, like, a big bush, though. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's look at a clip. So, <laughs> it all went there, I guess. I don't know. So when you say kind of gay, uh, <laughs> like, are you hooking up with dudes and chicks right now? Or what's the... What's the, what's the vi- oh, no. After what I went through the, for 10 years, I'm completely just doing my own thing. I'm not... Um, I'm not with anyone. I would do, like, I, I admitted it. Like, I saw this trans girl, comic. She was really pretty. I'm like, dude, I will. I would do that. Like, you'd made a good choice. What would you do? What would you do with the trans comic? Describe exactly what you would do. Well, well, I mean, again, like, I'm, I'm grinding. I'm out here trying to, like, rebuild myself. Yeah. And if she was just like, hey, if you were to, like, do something with me, what'd you do? I'd be like, I'd be like, Oh, uh, well, you know, like, like, get on Kill Tony. Like, I would, like, honestly, God, I would, I would suck it. Okay, there you go. Here's the little joke book. There you go. J.P. Lambiase, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing. There he goes, everyone. It's a long walk in those pants. There he goes. Well, howdy, y'all. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. Sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. Why wait? You can get a therapist through Talkspace right now. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Red band. I love therapy, and I find it so helpful, Tony. Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. Affordable. With Talkspace, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. Yes. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health made easy. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session. Mental health care made easy. Incredible. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash Tony and enter promo code SPACE80. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash Tony and enter promo code SPACE80 to get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash Tony, promo code SPACE80 right now. Hey, y'all, this podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Red Band. I love Squarespace, Tony. When it comes to building a website, I trust no one else. Sell exclusive content on your site by adding a paywall to sell memberships or courses or sell files your customers can download, like PDFs, music, eBooks. You can upload video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages. You can even sell access to your video library by adding a paywall to your content. Easily manage your clients and invoices uh, from vetting, letting to... Vetting leads, you got it. All right, all right. From vetting leads to receiving payment via invoices in one streamlined, customizable workflow. One streamlined, unedited, easy to read workflow. That is incredible, Red Band. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash kill Tony to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain right now. All right, we're going to keep it moving here. This guy's name uh, is also Italian. Could be an Asian guy. Uh, Make some noise for Giovanni Vadana, ladies and gentlemen. Giovanni Vadana. Oh, here's Giovanni, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, What's up, guys? I know it is. uh... Uh, So I just got out of a long relationship. I've been trying to date more. And dating women in Austin is insane. Uh, I had a back problem the other day, and uh, I go back to her place, and she's like, take your shirt off. I'll give you a massage. And usually, you know what that means. It's going to be, you know, a massage. Take my shirt off, and then she started doing this. She gave me a Reiki massage. 
<laughs> Listen, <laughs> just grab a rake. Rake my back. I don't know. Like, stick a finger up my ass. Do anything besides massage my energy, bitch. Like, ah, damn, Reiki massage, man. It's, it's wild. Uh, Dayton's wired. Especially, I'm, I'm 30 now. And I know I'm 30 because every time I drive by a house, first thing that pops in my head, it's like, that's a nice yard. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm a yard guy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. Ooh, you're welcome. Giovanni Badana doing the Reiki version of stand-up comedy. <laughs> Not really touching anyone in the room at all. <laughs> wow, that was incredible. How long you been doing stand-up, Giovanni? Um, a year consistently. Here in Austin? Yeah. What do you do for work? I uh, work next door at Shakespeare's. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you've been on this show before, right? A year ago, actually. Yeah. Like You uh, had a towel on your waist. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. remember. You were in the middle of a shift. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and here you are. You've been working hard at it for the past year? I really I really have. I've uh, given up a lot for this. and uh, What produced... have you given up, exactly? Uh, my truck my truck got repoed. <laughs> Ooh. Uh -huh. uh, I, I call my mom once a month. Uh, yeah, I stopped talking to my mom. So that's part Why'd of it. Why do you stop talking to your mom? Uh, disappointment, mainly. She was disappointed no, in I'm you? No, I'm disappointed in, her. <laughs> in my comedy career. <laughs> okay. Uh, interesting. But your mom loves you. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm the favorite, for sure. How my many mom. kids does she have? Uh, three. What did the other two do? do the, They're you, you're the favorite. Yeah. It's where the bar back unfunny comedian is yeah, her favorite. Yeah, it's all right. I, I eat ass, so that's all that matters. I... Okay. I, well, it's, I feel like it's important. People you're talking know. about your set tonight? No, no. <laughs> a little bit. All right, Giovanni, tell us more about you. What do you do for fun? What do you do to, when you're not doing stand-up? Uh, I snowboard. I was a snowboard instructor for a while. That was interesting. Um, we I'm were so bored during your set. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, Reiki massages, you know. Uh, but no, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm undocumented. I'm a DACA recipient. That shit's tough. A what? DACA. What's that? Dreamer. Uh, a dreamer. He's a dreamer. Yeah. Oh. I dream. What does that mean, Dave? He's dreaming for a real stage time. I think right <laughs> now, but I loved it, buddy. That was straight up full tilt regular stand up. Thank you, man. I awesome. appreciate it. And the hat took some of the mean out of it. I love that. I like a guy who's here, but also can run a miniature golf course. I yeah. think that's great. Yeah. So you're, is it? So basically, you're an illegal immigrant. Yeah, I do get married. So if anybody wants to give me a green card, that'd be great. Yeah. Are they? Uh, yeah. They're being so so tough ask him where he's originally from and all that. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Mexico. No. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Mexico. Yeah. Uh, from Bama. Uh, grew up young at six years old. Didn't know that you need to be born in a certain location to mm -hmm. get paperwork. I uh, grew up thinking I was white. I was fucked up when I found out I wasn't. Uh, and then the worst part is I want to get my motorcycle license at 14. They're like, no, get out. Whoa. So, <laughs> I was like, what? You beat the rush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you seem white. You have no accent whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's why yeah. I'm still here. What's the, most <laughs> what's the most Mexican thing about you? Do you I have love tamales. Wow. Tamales are great. Mm -hmm. I can't make them. Good old tamale music there. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. This is pretty sweet, buddy. It's something you don't really see in Texas. Now, uh, <laughs> What's dude. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go no, ahead. you go ahead, Dave. No, I was just going to say, dude, have you ever been back that way to do stand up? Um, on, yeah, right. Uh, no, have you? Uh, honestly, this is, might be a bummer. Um, so DACA dreamers, they um, are allowed to leave the States, but I am not allowed back in. So um, I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> are you sure you're not allowed back in right now? Seems like pretty much everybody's coming. Yeah. True, true. You're right. You're you right. think I you're going to be the one that they stop? <laughs> They're like, no, let the bus loads through. That guy with the checkered hat and a motorcycle, no good. Oh, you have a towel on tonight as well. It's like yeah, your trademark. Yeah, it is. Hell yeah. I fucking hate my life. I don't think they let you back in. <laughs> once you're over, once you're here. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It seems they like you're safe. Over. It's like you get on base, you call a timeout, the umpire's cool. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but okay. 
baseball. You I, need to yeah. learn this for your <laughs> test if I you want to become an American. I, that's, I'm, that's why I need a green card. I you need someone study. to marry me. You better study. Okay, uh, Giovanni Badana. Um, anything else crazy we should know about you before we let you go? Um, no, I, I eat ass. Uh, I love. Uh, when you say you I, eat well, wait, ass, wait, wait. I love black booty and white drugs. That's about it, you know. Oh. Give it up for your next mayor. Come on, guys. <laughs> Is that true? Black booty and white drugs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Which one do you like sniffing the most? <laughs> Dude, have you, have you ever done both at the same time? No. <laughs> it's pretty nice. You should try it. Wow. That's great. So when you say you eat ass, do you go straight for it right from the get? No, you gotta spit on it first. Like a little... <sighs> oh, and then you lick your own loogie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't buy it. I don't buy any of this. Should we see if we should? <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe. I'll do the white first drugs. All, I want to. First of all, a guy with your background would not dress like this, all right? He at least would iron his slacks. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny you say that. I'm so self-conscious about that. About what? It's wrinkles. All right, well, you know what? Interesting. I mean, I am. If it doesn't work out here, there's always Canada. You know what I mean? Come on, buddy. That's Live true. Live the dream. Yeah, they have Make drugs it happen, there. let them stay. Last time you were on, you got a little joke book? A little joke book, yes, sir. Nice. There you go. We'll go fill it up with jokes, yeah. Giovanni. Oh, wait. My, there my dog ate it. My dog ate it. Giovanni. You have a dog? Two dogs. Blue Nose Pitbulls. You have two dogs right now? No, no. They're at home. Where's home? Uh, the ghetto, Riverside. Riverside? Yeah. yeah, it's ghetto. First time I moved in there, first thing I heard across the way, pa, 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 let me in, bitch. And an hour later, across the other way, Bang, bang. So, yeah, gunshots. Your dogs right. talk? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Wow. Giovanni Badana. There he goes, everybody. Giovanni. Right back to next door he goes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian, uh, 60 seconds, goes to Corey Smith, everyone. Corey Smith. Here we go. I, uh, I'm bald, but I, I, don't, I don't miss having hair. I miss taking chances with haircuts. Uh, I used to stop by like a random house business and just take a chance with a haircut. You know, they don't have an actual sign, just like the number seven and the scissor logo. Break that down for the seven, that's how much the haircut costs. The scissor logo means they don't speak English. I walked into this place in Chicago. This lady knew I didn't speak Spanish, but she wasn't gonna lose a customer. She grabbed me, marched me to a chair, sits me down, wants to do the whole thing without talking. Actual words, just picks up clippers, holds nets to my head, and goes, eh? I said, eh, uh Puts those down, picks up scissors, goes, eh? I don't think there's a third choice, so, uh-huh. And then she just proceeded to give me the haircut she assumes all white people get. Top three haircuts of my life. I hung out and had Kool-Aid with her kids. Support your local house business. All right, thank you. Nice. Well, wish you would have cut some of those jokes out of your set tonight. Yep. Corey Smith? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Did you, was the first thing that you said, I'm Paul? No. What'd you say about bald? Bald. Got Bald. it. Yeah, yeah. I got really confused there. No, I good. heard Paul over here. Sometimes the audio ricochets a weird way, but indeed you are bald. I am. Um, why would you say that when it's obvious? <laughs> uh, you know, it's like a butchered up old joke. I'm usually a storyteller, and that's like the only thing I could really fit in this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave. But as the new guardian of the galaxy, <laughs> let me ask you. <laughs> you do kind of have like a superhero with no power. Feel about it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Boo. Okay. Mm. How long have you been doing stand-up, Corey Smith? Going on 11 years. Nice. 11 yeah. years. There's a Good lot of veterans here tonight. Yeah. Uh, and that was your best minute, you said. No, that's the only minute I could fit. I've got like seven-minute bits and five-minute bits, a couple four-minute bits. Storyteller, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Maybe you should be on Ellen. I this sucks getting roasted by my fucking hero, right, guy? <laughs> it's quite a One of them's named Dave, but holy shit, dude. Nice okay, All right. there you go. That's right. Way to bring down the mood even Swing further. Yep. Uh, don't know, you're digging yourself. I thought you did great, buddy. Thanks, man. 
So uh, what's uh, what's up? What's next for you there, Corey? Uh, I'm gonna cry this off and finish my fucking bullet bourbon and uh, chill. We were playing Yahtzee outside. Whoa. Yeah, dice on the street, Sixth Street. I oh. believe around here they call it CeeLo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yahtzee. No wonder everyone's moving to Austin. <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> I'm just so, waiting for the air conditioner to freeze me again. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Uh, collect unemployment professionally, yeah. Nice. You're what? I collect unemployment. I thought you said you're oh. a cuck unemployment. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Close enough. I, what was the last job that you had? Uh, I managed a Ninja Nation. What's oh. that? It's like an obstacle course for kids. Really? Yeah. And Is that now, hard with your bracelet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> used to run an obstacle course for kids. Yeah, it's yeah they getting like, out of his basement. Yeah. All right? <laughs> getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> you better hit him harder. It's How called unlocking the door. <laughs> <laughs> How did that job end for you? Uh, I uh, took the opportunity to get fired when they were... Basically, I knew I wanted to get fired from this job, and I mentioned a couple code violations, and then two weeks later... There it is. Whistleblower. Whistleblower. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's super it's easy to get fired from a job. What was the problems with the children's obstacle course that you blew the whistle on? No, I, like I started as the assistant manager in sales, and I was just basically the front desk bitch the whole time. So, uh -huh. yeah, burn it all down. They didn't let you play with the kids? No, that was too much, actually. Too much. You know, you get a job to get near the kids, and they put you right up front. I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Disappointing. Yep. That's how it works. What's your love life like, Corey? <laughs> Honestly? No. No, no not at all. <laughs> lie. Lie. All right. Shit. Way to go, buddy. I, uh, Walking on. I swear to God. All right. Uh, I actually had two threesomes this week. Two different threesomes? Two different threesomes. No back way. to back. Swear to God, man. I'm not playing. It took two cops to put you in the car? <laughs> Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> fucking day wow. of hell. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Oh, Two unbelievable. different line, threesomes this week. So, Two, yeah. where did this happen? The obstacle course? Uh, no, dude. I <laughs> Both at my place. Did the kids get put in timeout for that? <laughs> <laughs> Getting double Dave. So explain to some of these people that are out there a lot of single our, our fan base is a lot of single men. Um, ex ex <laughs> yeah. Explain to these uh, young men how they could have their own threesome too. How does this happen twice in one week? I mean, you must be killing it at Yahtzee outside. Uh, <laughs> honesty kills the game. Just be honest. Okay. You know, hey, I'm talking to someone else. They're into chicks. Uh, they saw your profile, think you're hot. You want to come over? Okay. So they came over to your place, and then what happens? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I mean, we did a little marijuana, did a little drinking. The first, the one girl showed up first, uh, so we had some sex before the other girl showed up, because uh -huh. it took her like 45 minutes. Her husband sent her over. Whoa. One of those situations. Dave? What a day at the RV park. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Is this lcj 455 er No? Hail to the chief, dude. So you bang one girl, and you finish. You sit around waiting for the other girl, yep, and then the other minutes. girl comes, and then what happens? Take us through step by step. Step by step, uh, I made the one girl answer my door and bring her in. Uh huh. Uh, so I'm already sitting in the bedroom, and then uh, the other girl told her to start sucking my dick, and uh, I had both of them eat my ass. I did the whole Whoa. archer back backwards, the rusty trombone whole situation. Get back there, get back. There. Uh, wow. I bidet, so it's clean. Wow. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I've never seen you like this. I am. Um... Even your spray on tan is blushing. <laughs> I mean, really. Very excited right now. This is incredible. So you had two girls eat your ass. Correct. And you had never met them before this? I met one before this, yeah. Okay. Yep, and then the other one was a hinge date, supposedly. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. I'm sorry, by the way. In no. three weeks, whenever you see this, this no. is my bad. No, don't apologize. Yeah, this no, is well, the best it's... interview of the night so far. All right, well, there you go. It really is. Yeah, yeah. you'll get some DMs, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> when you talk to the police, I take out parts like, I made her do this. I made her, do that. <laughs> made her open the door. Right. Hell yeah. So from the front door to the back door, <laughs> yeah. they eat your ass, and then what happens? Let's keep going in order here, step by step. Uh, yeah, the new arrival was sitting on my face, and the old arrival was sitting on my crotch, and then they decided to switch places maybe 10 minutes in. Wow. And then uh, my back, I mean, I'm old, so I had to switch positions, switched into doggy style, and the one girl continued to eat my ass while I fucked her doggy style. Wow. Yeah, I'm an animal. I'm really sorry, Mom. I, so, I... Mom's getting her ass ate right now. Oh, so, dude, you know, uh, it runs in the family. She is an animal, too. There's Red Band's fart sound effect for the episode. One per episode, guaranteed, always. Um, when you're in a threesome, it's always embarrassing to ask, who's closer to the Tylenol? <laughs> My back's acting up. Acetaminophen, if you will. Uh, Touche. So... Uh, you, how okay. many times do you come during this night with two different women? You I came... got a four. Wow. I got four. a four. I've been on a mad run. I can't keep, I like, every day, four or five. Do you, I you have use to any performance-enhancing drugs Nothing. during this? Never have. I'm scared of it because of my heart. What's wrong with your heart? I don't know. I'm just fat all my life. How'd you lose the weight? Jiu-jitsu. Wow. I used to be 335 pounds. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. You went from... So awesome. Rear naked choke to rear naked folk Ooh, eating yeah, your ass. Yeah. Okay. I got laid when I was a fatty too. It's just about honesty. I don't. I don't know what it is. That's incredible. But here you are now as a young Putin impersonator. <laughs> I assume <laughs> the women are throwing themselves at you. Well, Corey Smith, uh, wildly horrible set, but an unbelievable <laughs> interview. Your Thanks. honesty during the interview is the same reason why this was a success and uh, and why you get uh, threesomes all the time. But wait, before I let you go, I only talked about one threesome. Let's cover the other one real quick. <laughs> is this the same main girl in the other threesome? Or is no, it two, two different? So I tried five different girls on the second girl. We kept trying, because the one girl wanted to have a threesome really bad. We kept trying and trying and trying. Two people said yes, but never showed up. The two people that said yes hit me up the next morning. <laughs> so I said, come get it. And at 11 a.m., they came and got it. So let's go I, real All right, hang on a second. Quick. I didn't plan on talking about this, but I made the one girl suck the other girls off of me. Wait. No shower in between. Explain what that means. The night before's pussy got sucked off the next morning you by new chicks. You didn't chick. shower? They told me not to. Wow. This guy is single-handedly causing a super strain of an STD. Or, you know. This is how coronavirus started. It all comes back to Corey Smith. So uh, how many times do you think you came the next morning? Just twice. Just twice. So a total of six we could guess in 24 hours. In 12, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 12 hours. Unbelievable. This guy is fucking incredible. You ever think about getting a Costa Rican vasectomy? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Well, there you go. Here's a little joke book. There he goes, Corey Smith, nice everybody. Job. All right. Unfortunately, the great Cam Patterson could not make it here tonight. I know, very, very sad. His first Monday miss since he's become a regular. Uh, he's in Florida visiting family, taking care of business right now. However, in his place tonight, we do have one of the greatest golden ticket winners in the history of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a new 60 seconds from the great and powerful Martin Phillips, everyone. Martin Phillips. Uh, um, I'm starting a true crime podcast. I just have to kill the people first. And, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, they're, yeah, they're in front of the police. So I confess. I'm like, subscribe. And like, uh, uh, like where are the bodies? Like, that's next episode. You know? It's going good. Uh, 
you know, at least, you know, we all used, you know, like Dalmatians at the uh, Fire House. It was, I uh, never understood why, but I think I figured it out. I think it's like they, they go to the scene, like, hey, start your house, burn down. Want to pet our dog? Uh, that thing fucked me up, okay? <laughs> Where that thing was, okay, well, about it being, okay, uh, uh, I'm not married, uh, 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 I'm too, you know, too wild of a man, you can't, you know, hold me down, but <laughs> my, my friend get me marriage advice, he was like, yeah, yeah, I treat it like a job. And I was like, man, I've been pretty shitty at a while, mind you, you know, I've been, I've been fired, you know, and that's why I came up with a better analogy, treat it uh, like a vacation, because you stay up for it, you look forward to it, then we get there, it kind of sucks, but, <laughs> but we're here, and we're gonna have a good time, damn it. Right? Make it the best of it. Right, so. Martin uh, Phillips uh, with a brand new minute 35. That's how you do it. Yeah. Again, one of the greatest golden ticket winners in the history of the show. Always, 100% of the time, an unbelievable set. Incredible performance tonight. How many threesomes have you had this week? Oh, that, uh, more than that guy. Uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever you said. Uh, you are an unbelievable fucking performer, Martin. Dave, what do you think about this guy? First of all, we got a picture before the show, but it's all a blur. Uh, and, uh... <laughs> that's it. The tech joke, all right? Come on. Hell yeah. What do I think? Yeah. Awesome joke writing. Oh, thanks. How long have you been doing it, buddy? Oh, a while. Like a decade or so. It's what? actually, believe it. <laughs> a decade. Ten years. Ten, ten years. Ten, ten, ten. Believe it or not, that's less than most of the bucket pools tonight. Oh, we had okay. two 13 and 11 years uh, and, a, and a bar back from next door. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> But so far, the performance of the night. How's life been going for you, Martin? Uh, good. You know, oh, actually, I'm dressed up looking nicer tonight for a reason. Because uh, everyone tell, I, I've heard from millions of people that I sound like this one guy. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm officially becoming an RFK Junior impersonator. That's how you do it. This guy killed it. I, 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 That's yeah. great. So, it's true. Oh, I got it. But it's contra it's it's interesting. You're like if RFK Jr. took the vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, Tony. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wow. So uh, I'm really excited. There's not uh, too many people I can impersonate. So I'm really happy to have Incredible. <laughs> Really? Incredible. You're run he's running for president. You're waddling for president. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Uh, what else have you been up to, Martin? Uh, you know, just hanging around, chilling. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, was, what was that joke that got stepped on? I didn't hear the end of it. Uh, what was yeah, the what, joke? What, it was, oh, it was like, uh, uh, like the Dalmatian out of the fire. It was like the reason they're like, hey, start your house, burn down. Want to pet our dog? That's, that's, that's all we can do. That's all we got. So, <laughs> okay. Okay, good. We got laughs. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay, good. Cool. Do you ever get girls hitting you up, fans of the show, trying to hang out with you or something like what that? You, uh, here's a, this is a crazy story. Uh -huh. uh, it was, uh, it, it was, I didn't even, it's not even signing in my DMs. I got an actual email. It's just like, like, like spam, you know? And uh, she hit me up, it was a regular message, but then at the end she wrote, P.S. I'll sign an NDA. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, wake up. <laughs> wake up. But yeah, then I messed her back or whatever, and then she reveals she's in a open marriage. So, and she had, she said she hadn't been with with anybody for five years. So, 
barely an open marriage, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Now, after the show, when you go back to the laboratory, <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you. What projects are you working on? <laughs> Unbelievable, Martin. What else have you been doing around Austin, Texas? How's Texas been treating you? you uh, moved it, here. It's all right. Yeah, it's a bold stuff, you know? Yeah? Yeah. I, I, I have a boring life. <laughs> like what? What does it seem like? What goes on? I get recognized a lot more, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, and I'm just in Austin. Like, you've been out in town. They're recognized, so it's the worldwide, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm kind of pretty uh, pitbull, you know. So, uh, yeah. I love it, man. You absolutely did it again. You're unbelievable. We love you, Martin well, Phillips. Anything else jokes. we should know about great before jokes. letting you go? I, I, I'm good. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to uh, change the uh, tone or anything, but uh, uh, a friend of mine, a uh, uh, comedian, uh, 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 Comedian I met in D.C., he, um, it is, he, you know, he passed away, he's gone, but he left his special out there, so you can't remember him, good guy, just search on YouTube, J.E. Agbon, it sounds the way I said it, so, uh, it's, uh, check him out, rest in peace, good guy, and RFK Jr. approves it. So okay. That's it. Thank you. There he goes, Martin Phillips. Martin. Martin, great, great one, buddy. Yes, indeed. Hello there, yet again. This podcast is sponsored by Freeze Pipe. Are you ready for 420? For the chillest cannabis smoking experience, you need a glass pipe from Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe makes an array of freezable pipes, bubblers, and bongs that are 80% colder than using ice cubes to chill smoke. The result is a deliciously smooth puff without the harshness, coughing, or water chugging. All right, man. Freeze Pipe's secret is the use of glycerin chambers on every piece. Pop the glycerin chamber in the freezer for one hour. As smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled by over 300 degrees. Tony, I'm no scientist, ah. <laughs> but I can say what whoever invented the freeze pipe deserves the Nobel prize in physics i'm telling you this puppy rips puppy rips indeed visit the freezepipe.com from now until april 22nd to shop their biggest sales event of the year that's the freezepipe.com and if you see something you like that's not on sale use code kill tony for 10 percent off your entire order america owned with over 100,000 happy customers shop freeze pipe today and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever okay Ooh. Thank you, Heidi. All right. Pulled another name out of the bucket. This is an exciting one because this is one of our uh, producers, a guy that fucking hustles around for the show, does a lot of work around here. Normally, this is the guy that goes and grabs everybody and brings them back. So he's very excited to perform. I think he signs up all the time. Rarely ever gets pulled. Make some noise for Colt, everybody. It's Colt. You know him. You love him. From back in the day. You either uh, you either die Matt Reif, or you live long enough to see yourself become Dane Cook. Good, good. <laughs> no, I'm an Austin local. I've been here in hell, Austin, three years now. It's going great. You hear a lot of weird stuff on Sixth Street. Uh, the other day, this guy walked up to me. And he goes, "Hey, man, you know albino people eat the best ass." I was like, what? Right? What the fuck? He goes, yeah, it's because they already have pink eye. <laughs> My God, weird eyes, those folks. <laughs> you guys like politics? <laughs> Palestine? <laughs> I don't think they're pals with any Steins. <laughs> Uh, thank you, that's my time. Wow. That's a great joke. Good joke. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's funny. Good to be here. Hell yeah, Colt. You are. You're always here, but yes, you're never sir. there. Yes, sir. I know. I know. Happy to be here now, though. Incredible. David Spade, what'd you think about this young guy? I thought it 
good stuff. I think I uh, like Pink Guy, I like Palestine. Mm -hmm. so, that's a good one. And I think you had three, right? So boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I think two out of three hit. That's pretty good. Those two are good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Right yeah, the like Matt, you. right? Dave, you like that? I think uh, I love how uh, Tony is uh, insourcing. <laughs> this guy's a runner for the show. Yeah. Who's next, your maid? What's going on here? <laughs> Nicolta uh, became a, a part of the show many, many years ago. He famously, we found him on a road show in Dallas, Texas, and we found out he can kick really high. He's a kung fu, what are you, you were the kung fu champion or something? Uh, Cheng Hung style taekwondo. I was a fourth degree black belt and I uh, competed, uh, competed internationally a lot. And I won a lot. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting nervous. I don't know, I don't do it anymore really. I'm getting nervous, you're gonna ask me to kick. Yeah, just kick real quick. Don't make a big deal about it. Just kick no big deal. Line. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! Whoa. Hell Holy yeah. Holy man. Set, set oh you up my God. Wow. What an insult to the last act. Wow. Look at that. Do it again. Dave didn't see. Do it again. Do it again. Whoa. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. You would kill it at the children's obstacle course. That would kill. I do. I do. <laughs> 80 pounds of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> 85. 85. So tell us more, Colt. What else is about your life? What's been going on? Oh my gosh. I love my life. I'm so blessed. Uh, you and Red Band have completely changed my life. Uh -huh. I uh, ran and operated a uh, martial art academy for many years. And after COVID, of course, before that, I got on your show. Mm -hmm. I uh, closed my school down and I moved down here, started working at the Vulcan. Yep. Now proudly work at the Sunset Strip. I'm a sound guy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I'm loving life. And you're doing a lot of comedy. Absolutely, like 14 times a times a week. I, I try love to get that. out. Tony, you know, I learned something about Colt recently. He is like a crazy yo-yo champion. He, he, he like, like a badass yo-yo. Do you have a yo-yo on you? I do backstage, I think. Oh, no. we got to get that yo-yo, everybody. Yo-yo. Oh, wow. Somebody knew it was coming. Look at that. Oh, yeah. This oh, is some yo-yo music right here. Give me some cool music. Okay, and it's time to yo-yo, everybody. Here we go-go. Uh-oh. Oh, walking the dog. Walk the dog. Nice. Where's the trombone at? Give me some trombone on this. Wow. <laughs> Rock Holy the baby. Holy shit. Wow. Around the world. That's wow. awesome. Wow, yeah. incredible. Hey, Tony. Tony. Yeah, David Tell. Tony, it's official. The comedy boom is over. <laughs> I mean, it's over now. That's it. That's it. Get out while you can. Yo-yo tricks. I heard you also do bird calls. Can you do oh, yeah. bird calls? Oh, yeah. I actually, uh... I can spin plates on sticks as well. <laughs> Very good. This guy is the complete package. <laughs> Funny, flexible, and with that yo-yo thing, available. I mean, really. <laughs> this guy, you better hang on to him, Tony. Oh, this yeah. guy's going places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's one of our uh, hardest workers, one of our great, uh, great, great, great people on the squad. Good for the morale, good for everything. What else, Colt? Okay. Um, <laughs> That's you, it. <laughs> you already have access to any joke book you want, pretty much. You could just Oh, pop. do I? Oh, shit. Well, I didn't know that. You've never gotten a big one? No, sir. That was before my... That was, yeah. Really? Well, if you give him this now, what are you going to give him for Christmas? I mean, really? <laughs> you cheap piece of shit. You cheap prick. Yeah, yeah. hopefully a raise. <laughs> it was a big joke, Bug. Merry Christmas, Colt. Christmas came early. Oh my God, that is the funniest. Oh my God, how about another hand for David Tell, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely. Truly killing Tony, as always. Um, his new special Hot Cross Buns is out now, so make sure you go see it immediately.
All right. I'm excited about this next bucket pull because it's a one-word name that I've never seen before, I don't believe. Uh, so those are always interesting. They tend to either be absolutely hysterical or crazier than shit. Let's see what happens with the comedy styling. 60 seconds of Zebulon, everybody. The Kill Tony debut of Zebulon. Okay, here we go. So I got a theme going on, which is heavy set. It both describes my body type and the material I'm gonna do. So let's start off in a good place though. I'm celebrating 20 years of marriage. Some noise. I appreciate it. It's actually not that great. She's a really annoying bitch that's always on my back. <laughs> no, I'm not married to a woman. I'm married to chronic pain. I've been in pain every day for the last 20 years with a spinal injury, so hip, hip, hooray, I guess. Despite all the pain, maybe because of it, drugs aren't that effective. I used to take 180 milligrams of morphine every day. Never got me high. It kind of helped the pain. Most of it for me was getting me super constipated, so it definitely wasn't the shit, you know. <laughs> I'm be honest with y'all. Sadly, I'm thinking about divorcing pain. She's just always on my nerves. I just haven't had the courage to pull that trigger yet. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Thank y'all. I'm Zeb Green. <laughs> All right, Zebulon. Yes, sir. Fuck yeah! Welcome to the show, Zebulon. What a cool name. Where does that come from? Yeah, um, it uh, is a Hebrew name, but my mother got it from the uh, 70s TV show, How the West Was Won. Zebulon McCahan, I'm country as shit. <laughs> wow. How country? Where were you raised? Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. I was on here about a year ago. I've lost like 130 pounds and grew a beard since then. So. Wow. Yeah. Right. Did you go by the name Zebulon then? I went by Zeb Green. So recently I've changed my stage name to Zebulon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. What made you change your name to Zebulon? He moved to Mars. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it had a little more presence to it, something more unique. And I, to be honest with you, I felt like I've grown in my confidence over this last year, and it made me feel more confident on stage. Like it just, like Zebulon, like go up there and fucking kill the shit. So I love it. I love it. Is that your real first name? Zebulon? Uh, so my full name is Brian Michael Zebulon Green. I have way too many fucking names. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's my third name. I go by Zeb, and then on stage, Zebulon. Amazing. What do you do for a living? Uh, so I was in the aerospace industry for a long time, but I'm disabled. Uh, my back's all fucked up. Like I was talking about my How set. How did your back get fucked up? Uh, car wreck. Um, somebody hit me from behind and it tore my nerve root and crushed my spine. So my spine's fused together and my nerve root's torn and I have a uh, spinal cord stimulator installed. You know what that is? Now tell us. So I have like wires in my spine and a battery in my back and it basically interrupts the pain signal in my brain and tells my brain not as much pain as I'm in. So instead of being a 10 out of 10 all the time, I'm usually a 5 to 6 out of 10 all the time so I can function. Right now, you're in pain. Yeah, I can't feel my left leg hardly and because uh, I you know, do all these mics and waiting on mics and everything. But um, it's a lot better from uh, 2007 to 2019. I was basically bedridden in pain wow. um, before they put the uh, stimulator in. Okay, so. how high can you kick? <laughs> I would not attempt that because I'd fall off stage and kill somebody. So Absolutely, no. Definitely, you... definitely kidding. What do you do for fun, Zebulon? What takes the pain away? Uh, to be honest with you, and I know this is the cheap answer, it's just comedy. Like, I can't really do much other than that because uh, grinding on mics, uh, waiting around, which I love. That's all part of the game. Um, People around town know me because I carry my own chair around with me. Uh, when you do open mics, you're in a club that's full of empty chairs, but I have my own chair. It looks ridiculous, but I have to have it for comfort. Uh, so usually during the day, I'm in so much pain from doing all the activities, I just recover and get ready to go grind again. Is there so. anything that could help this pain? Is there a, anything, a, an operation? Have you heard about anything? Well, they're scared to cut the nerves because you could lose mobility, so I've tried... Um, you know, I've tried morphine. I've tried, they put me on fentanyl. That didn't work. I've tried like this year. I was raised kind of religious background. We can get into my, my whole life has been pain. It's very interesting. So, uh, I never tried a lot of substances, but I tried alcohol, weed, mushrooms all at different times last year. None of that worked. Like nothing works. So don't tell me there's something negative about fentanyl. <laughs> 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 what, what was fentanyl like? Can you describe it to us? What, what, what was that like? Yeah, so for me, uh, which is ridiculous, I, I have a, a joke about it I can tell you in a minute if you'd like. But uh, So for the fentanyl, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, y'all know it's, it's supposed to be 100 times more powerful than morphine. Uh, so they gave it to me, and they give you like a transdermal patch that soaks in your skin. It's supposed to be very effective. Uh, they told me to put one on, and they said, because you haven't had anything in your body in a long time, it'll probably put you right to sleep. I go home, nothing happens. I call them, and they're like, hey, take some hydrocodones with it. That didn't do anything. And they said, we'll put two patches on. I did that and took hydrocodones. It didn't do anything. I actually sent the patches to the manufacturer and had them tested. They're like, these are full of fentanyl. You should be like dead or something. And I was like, no, I'm good. So just nothing works. And uh, so pain is kind of like the, the theme of my life. I've always been in pain, and mm. it's like what pushes me forward, and it's just what it is what it is. So, wow. so yeah. right now, what are you on right now? Just the, I have the stimulator in my back, and that's it. Okay. Well, it's definitely not Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about How did you lose the weight originally? So, uh, to be quite honest with you, when I came up here, it was uh, February 13th of last year. Y'all were still at the Vulcan. Uh, it was the day I moved to Austin, and I got called on Kill Tony. I uh, did comedy. And, um, yeah, and so when I got home, I just thought about everything. And I was like, you know, if I ever want to fit in a plane seat, if I'm ever able, lucky to travel enough, to, you know, to travel to go do comedy, I was like, better lose this weight. So I just quit eating. And I was suicidal, and all kinds of things were going on when I did comedy. Uh, when I moved here, and comedy like literally saved my life because uh, fortunately people have been laughing. <laughs> so, Thank you. yeah. So I just I was basically like I don't need it. I need comedy. I don't need to eat. So, yeah. wow. So you just stopped eating. Yeah. Wow, and the fentanyl patches still didn't work. Well, I live over there. No, well, I didn't haven't tried them. While I tried the other substances; they didn't work. But I live in the same building that Celia uh, Celia Contreras lives in. Oh, okay. So my apartment's so bad that, like, for uh, I, I mean, now anyway, my apartment's so nasty I can't even cook in it. So that helped. <laughs> I'm poor, and I was like, I can't cook in here because of the rats and the roaches. So I'll just not wow. eat. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> You got me stumped here, Zeb. I, okay. Well, I can tell you about the beginning of my life. It's even worse, so. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So stand-up comedy is the only time when you're really not focused on the pain. Pretty much, and uh, even um, I have to, uh, I have a resting pain face, you know, so I'll, I'll have to remind myself, like, late at night, uh, depending on how many mics I've done, because, you know, obviously from just even sitting in a chair uh, hurts me. Like, the only thing that makes the pain even better is like laying on my right hip and getting the pressure off of it. So sitting in the chair, waiting on mics, doing mics, standing up, all that, you know, by the end of the night, I'm really in a lot of pain. And so when I get on stage, I can get it out of my mind because I know how to compartmentalize. Um, but I'll realize sometimes my countenance won't be good, you know, because I'm in pain. I'm like, oh, I need to fake this because people are listening to me. They're like, well, this guy's not having fun. Why are we, you know, and so I've learned how to, you know, I'm having fun, but it's just the pain, you know what I mean? So I've just learned how to dictate that on my face, so. Damn. I think I know how to cheer him up. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is a real balloon from the great <laughs> David Tell. Absolutely Woo. incredible. Why did he have a balloon on A true on? balloon. Absolutely yeah, amazing. Oh, you got it. What's that? It's a real balloon. It's a happy sure birthday is. balloon. <laughs> wow. Awesome. How do you feel now? You feel better? Four out of ten on the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Zero out of ten on pain. David Tell doing the Lord's work out here. <laughs> Who would have guessed that all it took was a quarter-filled balloon to be able to... <laughs> I'm winded, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anytime that pops, you can, uh, you can smell the sweet <laughs> scent of American spirit. <laughs> the breath of a dying man. <laughs> well, Zebulon... Uh, I uh, I was uh, very in, uh, very very intrigued by your uh, your tale and your story. Congrats on losing the weight and getting funnier and all this. How much time do you think you've acquired all together? I was going to ask him actually. How um, long is your longest set? I say this very humbly because I'm just over a year, but I have 25 proven and then a lot of stories with it too. So I've been grinding grinding hard as shit on. So it. six, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Keep at it, brother. No. Keep at it. It gets better. Keep at it, dude. You're doing great. I'd like love to have you on the Secret Show Thursday. Awesome. Too. There you go. It. A book spot. <laughs> Less pain. Dave making some adjustments to the <laughs> balloon adjustments. here. Oh. If you ever want to talk to me. There you go. Turn that frown there upside go, down. There's a happy face on that balloon now. There you go. Zebulon, what? everybody. He's got Thank a you. spot. The fun train keeps moving along.
as I pull another name out of the bucket. How about a hand for the lovely Heidi, everybody? Gina with three A's, dot HG on Instagram. An absolute charismatic sensation. We love her around here. And with that, your next bucket pull. Kent Hunter, everybody. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Kent Hunter. Here we go. Here's Kent, everybody. Uh, last time uh, I got on the show, Tony had arranged a date for me, which was really cool because I got to live out my lifelong dream of appropriating Indian culture. <laughs> Whenever I, get, uh, whenever I get nervous, my legs have a tendency to start shaking. And uh, so my mom told me to, uh, to help with the nerves to just imagine the audience naked. So if you guys see me start shaking tonight, I'm not nervous, I'm just really horny. <laughs> yeah. and, um, earlier this month, my, uh, my sister was in a car accident. And she's all right, but the car is totaled. Uh, personally, I would have chose to celebrate International Women's Day another way. <laughs> yeah, but, but what do I know? I have a penis and a car that works. So, <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. I was thinking the other day, I was like, if someone has oh, if Parkinson's has an orgasm, do they stop shaking? Whoa. <laughs> All right, man. Nice. Thank you. Dismount. There you go. A full minute from Kent Hunter. Thank you. Very lucky man, you get pulled out of the bucket a lot. I know. This is your second time in just a few weeks, correct? Yes, sir. And last time you were on, we talked about how uh, you were a virgin. We did. And uh, I sent you on a date. We got you on a date. I gave, uh, I think, a couple hundred bucks, sent you yes. off to a nice restaurant. It was fantastic. Thank you very much for that. How did that go? Take us through it. The people want to know. It went really well. Um, that was actually the second nicest restaurant I think I've ever been in in my what life. What was the first nicest restaurant? <laughs> uh, Calford's Chop House in Jacksonville. I don't know okay. if you've ever been there. Very nice restaurant. Yeah, but... I think I've been there actually. One of the best restaurants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like one of the only. <laughs> Shout out to Calford. <laughs> yeah. I think you got me there. I think you're right about yeah. that one. <laughs> Rings a bell. Yeah. But, yeah. but it, it was really nice. Uh, it was cool. Me and her, um, we just talked comedy most of it. We were both comedians, so we just had a good time, just enjoyed some amazing food and got to talk. And then you guys got to do spots at the Secret Show. We did, that was fantastic. Thank you for that as well. Definitely. Okay, and did you lose your virginity? I did not. Okay. I did not. <laughs> so where do you think it went wrong? I don't know. I, I personally wasn't that attracted to her. Whoa. So I was, and I know. Wow. Fair, look, fair. Who's, look at that little picky virgin over here. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. It's like yeah. giving an Ethiopian a Big Mac and then being like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm not that hungry. <laughs> Tony, I Jesus actually heard Christ. from her after uh, he left immediately after his spot, and she told me some things about what happened at the oh. beginning of the day. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. There's the gossip machine, Brian Redband. Here we go. Did you, did well, you the, tell her certain things that... Uh, that needed to happen at this date? Like you weren't, this was just. Why don't you just say what you heard and. Uh... Well, I, did, oh. I didn't message her because I was, I appreciate what you were doing for me, but I was a little uncomfortable with the whole situation. So I let her know <laughs> <What>? before. <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> what? Like, I don't know. I just, personally, I just want to do it on my own and just figure out. How old are you again? Way. 20. Oh, you're 20. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I mean, no rush. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How's it doing? Man, I knew I shouldn't have given away that balloon. <laughs> oh, my God. So how do you think you're going to do it on your own? If I can't help you, no one can help you. I, I don't mean, know. even the, when it naturally happens, like a buddy puts in a word, you know right. what I mean? Like, hey, Kent likes you, he's a good guy. Right. You know, like people get help. You don't want an assist at all. What are you, Kobe Bryant? Just fucking, <laughs> you gotta shoot the shot yourself. Yeah, See, Kobe right. jokes don't even work anymore. You can't even do a good ball hog joke anymore. <laughs> they used to be what he was famous for. Now it's a helicopter crash, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No real ball hog. I guess I am like, Kobe. Oh, what? Sorry. I guess I am like Kobe though, I keep crashing and burning. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Absolutely. 
Wow. Uh, okay. a young man at a crossroads. <laughs> five years away from renting a car. Look at him. <laughs> a young guy in a second fancy restaurant. <laughs> So what else is going on, Kent? You've been on the show a lot, so we've yes. talked a lot. Is there anything about your life we haven't covered that might be interesting? I you get know. pulled out of the bucket a lot. I know, this is all the support I'm worried about. God I never know what to talk about. God loves you in every way, except for that whole fucking dry dick <laughs> yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Nice. I wonder if that's why he loves me. No. Um, probably not. It's not real. None of it's real. <laughs> Maybe you could team up with the threesome guy and get some tips. Yeah. 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 Have you ever thought about watching another man fuck two chicks at once? <laughs> Go, Bill, man. <laughs> Turns out his ass is the third best restaurant you've ever been to. <laughs> So, Kent, anything else? Do you have any special skills or talents other than stand-up comedy or anything? No, really. This is all I care about. That's all you care about. When that guy was out here, yo, 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 did you get hard? What he did? (laughs) (laughs) Is there a type of porn that you enjoy? Oh, we talked about this last time. It's all lesbian. Lesbian Lesbian porn. That's the... Right. Not a good sign. No. So, you seem like a kind of good-looking dude. I, yeah, I don't feel like yeah. you would do okay out there. I'm, I'm really awkward, socially awkward. I'm yeah, not... no shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Thanks for leaking all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Got a peek in the diary. <laughs> how tall are you? Uh, how tall? Yeah. Uh, 6'3". Wow, what yeah, do you think uh, of that, ladies, huh? Well, that's all that matters. It's all, man. Yeah, it's all about Anyone have a gutter that needs cleaning? (laughs) (laughs) He's dressed for it. Do you think it's like a... (laughs) Do you think it's like a religious thing that's holding you back? Is it, do you think the Lord's watching or something? (laughs) No, I don't think it's that. I just, I'm very, like I said, very awkward and I have trouble talking to women. There's a lot of it, so. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Have you ever DM'd on Instagram? Or is not, that too much of it? Not really. Too weird, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe okay, I give up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> you really don't care about it, do you? I know. I'm just, I, I figure it'll happen when it happens. I'm not too... I'm just going to focus on comedy for now, and it's, it'll happen when it happens. All right. Well, how did you like the new Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's the poor kid. You're boxing him in the corner here with all this sex stuff. <laughs> Kent, you already have joke books. You've been on this show a lot. Another new minute. Congratulations, thank Kent you, Hunter. You. There he goes. Kent Hunter. Not to be confused with a cunt hunter, because this guy's not looking for cunt at all. He's just doing the comedy thing, and when it happens, it'll happen. You know what I mean? All right. Love the band. How about a hand for the band tonight? Are they the fucking best or what? Oh my god. Unbelievable. All right, we're flying through them tonight. Make some noise for Nate Barnard, everybody. Nate Barnard is next on Kill Tony. Here we go. And make, put your hands together for Nate, everybody. These guys wait all night for this. Everybody gets a... Hello. I've been uh, working on a dating app for school shooters. It's called Columbine. We got to get them shacking up, not shooting up. Get them distracted from what they're good at. Other dating apps are like, swipe left, swipe right. Our dating app is like, duck left, duck right, ah! (laughs) My girlfriend is a crisis actor. She gets upset about all this shit that never happened. I've been uh, watching so many OnlyFans leaks, I can only get off to women who can't make it financially. (laughs) People always uh, pick on Lance Armstrong for taking drugs, but his brother landed on the moon. (laughs) Could you imagine living up to that amount of pressure? Fuck yeah, Nate Barnard. Rock solid set. Big laughs from the crowd. No one says goodnight or at any ending. It's just they fade away. 
<laughs> I love it. Nate, uh, welcome. This is your first time on the show, Yeah, correct? first time. I would remember a face like yours. Um, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about six years. Six years. How old are you? Uh, 32. Six years, 32. Where have you been doing stand-up at? Uh, started in Connecticut for about five years. Okay. Yeah, it's Hartford? a wasteland. <laughs> yeah, Hartford. Uh, all the shitty open mics, like Irish bars with like drunk people. Yeah. Connecticut, famously one of the worst places in America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> famously. It was a dark time in my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that where you were born and raised? Uh, grew up in Massachusetts, but yeah, moved to Connecticut. What made you move to Connecticut? Uh, my mom's church was in Connecticut, and Ooh. she was like driving hours, and I was like, you should just move. You know, wow. like. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. You suggested <laughs> the move? Yeah, well, you know. Sometimes you just got to be like, you can't just drive, you know, a couple hours every week. You know? Well, I mean, with Jesus as our co-pilot, you would think that it would be easy. Uh, Nate, what is, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I work at uh, Whole Foods. Ooh, yeah. oh, nice. That. What do you do at Whole Foods? I'm in the dairy aisle. I'm just in the back, like, wow. really slugging it out, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Slugging it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm on, like, 500 milligrams of caffeine. Just yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> now, my first real legit, like, on a uh, tax form job was at a grocery store. And a lot of people don't know this, but dairy people spend most of their time inside of a refrigerator. Yeah. They, they found out I was good at dairy, and then they're like, you're only working dairy now. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's, a, it's a... It was kind of easy for three weeks, and then they're like, yeah, It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> it's my life, yep. See, I... I had a wrong. I trade. I pictured him as a Trader Joe's man, but um, yeah. I don't talk to those people. I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like the Red Sox and the Yankees, vicious rivalry. Give us a story from the Whole Foods. Something happened there. A cart. Something uh, with a cart. There's like two teens like run. Like one was in a grocery. Like yeah. like in the grocery cart. The other's pushing it. Yeah. And they just like slammed into like a end cap with beer in it and just like went everywhere. End cap. Lingo. And then. Um, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> He's using the lingo, yeah. inside baseball right there. I'm giving you behind the scenes The, the end scenes cap here. is the display area at the end of an aisle. But the yeah, there's cap. this black lady and she's like, that woman is a bitch. Black. Oh. <laughs> Wait, who said that? Uh, there's like a crowd gathering. Sorry, I'm rushing this story, but. Over by the end cap? <laughs> well, like everyone was watching all the Trying beer fall and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I will give you this, Nate, and I'm, I, I'll, we'll come back to Whole Foods in a second, but <laughs> we gotta please talk. remind us. But uh, I think it was very challenging. It's very hard to start your set with uh, school shooting jokes. That's a, So it was an uphill battle, as you found. And, uh, but you really turned it around on the he next He did. One. You really did, buddy. You saved yeah. it and uh, got him back, and that's, that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, we've seen that a couple times tonight. I noticed that with uh, Colt as well. He did yeah. that weird Matt Reif, Dane Cook joke and yeah. ended with that great Palestine, Pals of Steins joke. Yeah, they're not yeah. front-loading it. And it's and like if you, if you move the best stuff to the front, it changes the momentum yeah. of your entire set, the whole wave. So. And the Lance Armstrong girl, was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. For a guy who looks like he doesn't have a car but a bike, I assume <laughs> that one just rode itself. This is your first time on the show. Tell us more about you. What do you do for fun? Uh, well, I'm riding, I'm riding those electric bikes around a lot. You uh, love that. Look at the <laughs> smile that came on your... I'm really poor. It came alive. It's not great. Yeah, that really woke you up there. Yeah. The electric bicycle brings you great joy. Because it's like you're working out, but you're not. It's not, yeah. You know who loves workout. electric bicycles more than anybody I know? <laughs> Fitness King, yeah. Brian Redband. Yeah. Have you been e-biking? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you have a Super 73? What do you no, have? Dude. No, I use the cheap city bike. Oh, yeah. oh. oh wow. <laughs> that is the... Mm. Girls I... are pulling their panties back up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But it brings you great joy. Where do you take these electric city bicycles to and fro? Like around the that like trail around the river lake thing or whatever. How long have you lived in Austin? <laughs> uh, it's been about two years. <laughs> two years. Your, yeah. And you love it. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, pretty yeah. great. Like a thousand times better than Connecticut? Oh, yeah. Like anything's better than Connecticut. Yeah. You know, like. They don't even have electric bikes in Connecticut, do they? No, no. David Tell. 
I was uh, wondering when we get back to this Whole Foods thing. Cause, yeah, uh, <laughs> let's get back to it. That is the grocery way. store of choice of most people that can't afford it. Uh, you almost yeah. died at one. No, they always say, you know, that must be a place to have you run into some, like, uh, MILFs or something like that. They say. MILFs? Yeah. Yes, he works in dairy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whole milk, 2%. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Give yeah. him that vitamin D. <laughs> no, it's just beautiful, like, college-age women and then, like, the homeless. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Who are you turned on by more? Yeah. <laughs> I know my answer. <laughs> I got a lot to learn from the homeless, so... Do they? Do you guys have like nicknames there? Like yours is like white meat. Like what do they call you there? <laughs> yeah. What's your grocery store nickname? I don't, mostly I'm in the shadows, you know. I'm just I hear in you. the back in the dairy cooler. Smart, lay low. Back in the dairy cooler. <laughs> is it the original Whole Foods here in Austin that you work at, or the one that's uh, the creepy small one by the freeway? Yeah, the Target one. Oh Whole boy. Oh no. Oh sorry. no. Anybody uh, that knows the city knows you don't go to that fucking Whole you don't Foods. Go there. They tried to like slam it into this super. It's like the Sunset Strip of comedy clubs. It's <laughs> nice. Except the ceilings are lower, believe it or not, at the Whole Foods. I'm not kidding. I have one last question for you. Yeah, of mind. course. Uh, when you go in those freezers, do they lock? Does anyone get locked inside, or do they have a system there? No, the door slides open. Mm. Yeah, I mean, ideally. But uh, <laughs> say, don't you always hear about people freezing in there? Is there a big button you push or anything? I don't, I don't you ever thought so. about it? Jesus, I'd think about it all day if I was there. <laughs> He's like, I guess it would be a bummer. I think I'm gonna die on the electric bike, you know? Like that's what Oh, I'm better doing. chances, yeah. yeah. Have you ever wrecked on, on the, have you ever gotten into an accident on the electric bike? I uh, collided with this liberal guy like a month ago. A liberal <laughs> guy? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. You were. I, I was like ejected to the other side of the trail, How do you and I was, know? was bleeding. It, Biden? <laughs> <laughs> it might as well have been Biden. Uh, but I was like, "Are you hurt or anything? Do I owe you money or anything?" And he's like, "Don't go on the left side of the trail." Right. Oh. Yeah, he you leads to the it. left in no every way. So liberal. It's Unbelievable. So have you gotten to take out? Do you mind if I ask her? Wait, no, go ahead. Do you mind if you have you checked out the town yet? Because it seems like you know a lot about it. Do you know the town? Or? Yeah, a good amount. Like, where have you been? I, I guess not a barbershop, but... No, no. <laughs> no, this is my work. It is an interesting haircut. <laughs> I do believe it's that's It's not a, my best I'm work. I'm going that's to the a, bathroom. That's a six all the way around, huh? Is that what you asked for? A six or a seven? Is that a seven? We'll say easiest haircut ever? I think it started as a two, but it just kind of grew to this shit. You're a smart guy for that haircut. Yeah. That, that haircut screams homeschooling. Yeah. That's what it does to me. Bobby no Hill. fancy barbershops. Yeah. It was a two, and you weren't getting enough pussy, so you went to a seven. Yeah. Smart. The face Change says, it up. The face <laughs> says dairy. The hair says bag boy. <laughs> it's an incredible situation. What's your love life like? Empty. Whoa, I love the look back to the audience. <laughs> my goodness gracious. That's Have you been on a date recently or anything? I'm trying to get rid of my air mattress first. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're putting, the, you're putting the cart in front of the horse there. <laughs> Let me tell you, everybody knows you got you to gotta practice with the air mattress. You have to... It's like a hard level? Like, yeah, you have to... You have to you, say that, John Dees? You got to pop that air mattress. See, John Dees doesn't talk a lot, but when he does, it's like fucking lightning. When girls come over, you say, before you uh, get in here, you don't have any sharp objects or keys in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't have a compass exactly. from school or anything. Yeah. yeah. Nuva ring. Yeah, there's a guy that's uh, about like, 300 pounds <laughs> sleeping with a little green balloon tonight. So you think you have it rough. You know, uh, I like his disposition. He's not a stage hog. He sort of just takes it in. Yeah. yeah I like that. Like he's working at Whole Foods. He's pretending to listen. Yeah, yeah hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll get you have back. You, have you, have you uh, been with a girl since moving to Austin? No, not really. Have you kissed a girl since moving to Austin? No. Really? Is there a girl out there? You know, we do this thing every once in a while on this show where there's a hero from the audience, a young lady that hero. comes up and uh, gives a guy his first Austin, Texas Whoa. kiss. Hero? Is there a woman out there that wants to be a hero tonight? We have a segment on this show called Kiss Me. It's been a long time. We got one? All right, come on up. Kiss Cam, kiss Don't Cam. Don't raise your hand if you don't mean it. 
We don't, even don't play ask hard you. to get over here. Oh shit, this is a little smoke show. Look out, dude. Someone's about to yeah, fucking dude. have milky oh, yeah. underwear. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. This is unbelievable. This might be the greatest mismatch of looks in the history of this segment. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh my God. Here he, he is right with his forward. first Austin kiss. Whoa. Thank Look you. at the nice confidence change Thank on you. Nate Bernard. Yeah. He has color oh, in his great. face. Everything just changed. Big smile like he's on an unlimited e-bike on somebody else's account. Yep. He almost beat the shit out of me for shaking her hand. He's like, yeah, he's getting protective like, of his girl. Yeah, What's your name, fun. sweetheart? What's your name? Oh. That's my wife. Wow. Look at this. I love it. Unbelievable. Is it? There's a very proud husband out there. I do believe that's Andrew Tate in the audience tonight. <laughs> you never know who's gonna be here at Kill Tony. It's an... My name is Sarah. What is it? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. What do you do for work? Um, corporate America, work for a motor... What is that accent? I'm Persian. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know what? Since you're Persian, this sounds crazy, but Bones Eye, the guy that makes the joke books, Every week, for some reason lately, he's been putting one up here, a big joke book, that is just completely made of hair. There's hair, animal hair, on both sides. And who better to get a big hairy joke book than a Persian girl, Sarah, everybody. An American hero, maybe not American. And you, Nate, of course, you're leaving here with a big one. Yeah. And your first kiss. Sarah, thank you so much. Nate, how do you feel? Thank you, sir. Amazing, dude. Yeah. Tell us more. What was it, that like? Well, what was like, that like kissing another man's wife? Ideal. You know? You missed Persian Sarah in a makeout session. Yeah. Man, what happened? The second you leave. I kissed some guy's wife. You what? Yeah, I kissed some guy's wife. All right. Well, don't yell Beetlejuice. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I just had a writer. <laughs> Make it happen again. How do you feel? Really good. It's been yeah. like a year and a half of signups. Wow, you've been signing up for a year and a half straight. Yeah, straight. That goes to show you the bucket's crazy. It's got a mind of its own. It'll bring Shaky Leg, uh, what's his name, Kent Hunter up here once every three, three weeks. And yeah. you waited a year and a half. You were patient. And you got your first Austin kiss. You had a good set, and uh, we got through it. There he goes. Great job. Hey, Rick hey, and actually, wait, actually, wait I would love second. to have you at the Whole Foods of Comedy Clubs Thursday for the Secret Show. Whoa. <laughs> Hell yeah. You just got booked on a real show Thursday night, 8 p.m., Sunset Strip Comedy Club. We realized through eight bucket pulls that we did not get a female up here. I pulled until we got a female comedian. So your final bucket pull of the night, ladies and gentlemen, representing the women. Make some noise for Yvette Palafox. Yvette Palafox. Hell yeah. Make some noise for Yvette, everybody. True story. After a Christmas party, everybody was passed out the house. Nothing was stirring except for that dick when I took off my blouse. <laughs> so down on my knees to suck it like a skis. When all of a sudden, Santa? If any of y'all think it's Santa, like, I think y'all forgot we're at Kill Tony right now. You know, and so just cover your ears because, yeah, just cover your ears. And for the rest of y'all, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was sucking some head. So I was giving a blowjob, like, da 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 da. Santa? <laughs> Belly? I have a belly like Santa, and so does my dad. Uh, yeah, that's it. It was my dad. So what does one say when they have a dick in their mouth? Merry Christmas. <laughs> I don't know this. I don't know the time. So. OK, 58 <laughs> seconds from Yvette Palafox. <laughs> yeah. Is that last line, Merry Christmas? <laughs> I think so. 
Yeah. That was, I give that a high C for seasonal. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> nice Thank work. Thank you. Uh, last week, you could have done that joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jizz the season. Jizz the season. Um, Thank you. Welcome to the show, Yvette. This is definitely Hello. your first time on the show. Yes. Yes. I would remember if there was a female groundhog on the show before. Uh, welcome. Oh, my oh. turn I'm kidding. You're lovely. Yeah. You're it's absolutely crazy. lovely. Stunning. Exactly what I'm into. You're exactly my type. Um, anyway, <laughs> have, have you ever done... <laughs> oh, fuck. Have you ever done... <laughs> Damn it. This okay. is not an easy job, people. Uh, have you ever done stand-up comedy before? No. First time? Yes. Congratulations. Time. So, yeah. Is this uh, something that you've always wanted to do? What made you try this tonight? Uh... I was at South by Southwest, and the guy said, you're funny, you go on Kill Tony. Who said that? Uh, the guy in Who the comedy crew, like, he was a volunteer, like, a part of the comedy crew, and so he's like, you should try it out. <laughs> so uh, this is my second Monday coming up here, and I got picked. Amazing. Absolutely mm -hmm. adorable. And uh, uh, what do you do for a living? I am a professional party event, like, a service, like, bartending, cleanup, a servers, like... I provide the manpower for all the like events. Okay, I think she's got a good look for comedy. I, if you're just yeah, started, I yeah, like I think uh, <laughs> just keep working on it. I think you're getting there. It, Thank it's you. It's very nerve wracking here. Very nerve wracking. Yeah, it's not easy at all. Um, how long did you prepare for this? Did you write a lot? I came up with my minute uh, the next day after they told me about you, and so I tried it out on them, and I was like, all right, well, I'll just go with that. All right. And then I mean, I practiced on the drive up here. Okay. Well, let's figure out more stuff about your life that you can talk about, about your real yeah, life. Yeah, let's write her some jokes. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's have a little Tell. writing session for Yvette Palafox. Okay. Yes. What is that last name? I've never heard of such a last name. Palafox. Palafox? Yeah. It is Spanish. Uh -huh. So I'm actually one of the people that's like, no, I'm Spanish Indian when everybody's like, yeah, all right, you're a Mexican. But I'm like, no, it's Spanish. You're, an, you're like a Native American kind of? Yes. You're like if the Lando Lakes girl ate only Lando Lakes. How's that, how's that for a start? You know, uh, I do cook with a lot of butter. You're right. Yeah, that's a butter joke, I mean, everybody. For those of you that don't know, a lot, a lot of young bucks out there don't remember there used to be a Native American woman on the Lando Lakes butter box. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's one joke better mm -hmm. than anything you said tonight. Ah. Um, Why, thank you. Absolutely. These are all yours. Let's keep going. Okay. So, uh... You you uh, plan events. You clean up. Um, oh no! What? I don't plan them. Right. They call me and they t ask me, and I just provide the manpower you service. You organize it, right? No, I'm not a party host. Like okay. a part. I'm not like a wedding uh, planner or anything like that. What's the wildest thing you've seen at one of these parties? What uh, what goes on? Uh, you ever uh, seen a guy have two threesomes in twelve hours? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, about ninety five percent of my business is Indian community. Is what? Indian community. Oh, so you really work with like Native Americans? No, stuff. no, no, more. Not like the different. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you just wrote a better joke than the Lando Lakes thing right then. I don't know if you know that. That's yeah, the I was newest say. racist thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. That oh, was oh, incredible. No, is, uh, Not those Indians, but the... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, That was incredible. You really Indian. are funny. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. Uh, We're well, fucking digging it out of you tonight. <laughs> well, uh, Sanjay, who's my original OG Indian, like... Went out with him Talk one a night. little bit slower. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Sanjay, my OG Indian. Sanjay, your OG Indian? Yeah, that got me into the community. Wow. We went out one night. Uh, it was a St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I, I just woke up in jail. But I was like, um, I didn't know if I was funny or not. And I thought I was. But uh, I saw him literally the next weekend. And he was like, we all discussed it. We were trying to debate if you're racist or funny. And we decided with funny. So yeah. I was like, okay, if he's, if they said it, then okay. That's I always it. the answer. If, <laughs> if you're wondering if somebody's racist or funny, it's funny. So, so what, yeah. is, what exactly is her background? What, what is it? She has what? Uh, you are Spanish and Native American. Yeah, Apache. Apache, okay, yes. Okay, well, whatever happens tonight, don't sign any paperwork Tony gives you. Okay, really. <laughs> you know how that goes. That's right. Oh, Nin yeah. 90% of all of your earnings from here on <laughs> out are going to go to me. <laughs> uh, if not more. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so. Okay. Single? Yes or no? Yes. What kind of guy are you looking for? Not my ex. Oh. He was from the Bronx. I met him on the subway in Manhattan. Oh, you, so you've traveled. How could that go? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, I thought he was from Manhattan and uh, he was from the Bronx. Wow. Really? Uh, Is that him? He said I wasn't funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he didn't think I was going to get picked and he didn't think I was funny, so. Ha ha. He didn't think you were going to get picked tonight? You still talk to your ex? I have his dog. Is it well, a kidnapping? Is it a hostage situation? Does he know about it? Um, it was more of a situation. He couldn't have it in his apartment. Uh -huh. And he lives here in Austin as well. No, he lives in New York. You live in New York. No, I live in San Antonio. Okay. You took the dog to I San Antonio. I haven't one story yet. This is of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I was in New York. I met him on a subway. And subway. We... You seem more like a Jimmy John's kind of girl. Oh. All right. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm an Indian. <laughs> like that. Like that. But um, when I, he, uh, his dog needed a place to stay, and I was like, going to be a good girlfriend. I was like, well, if I was up there, babe, I would watch the dog for you. And that somehow ended up in a, like me flying out there on a road trip back with the dog because I said I was going to watch him. Wow. Do you ever miss Neil? He called my bluff. Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. But I have How to about now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your phone. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Yvette Palafox, I want to find out more about you. I, wanna, I think we should keep this writing session going a little okay. bit longer here. So, um, you wear that ring on your finger, but you're single. How did the breakup happen? Uh, How did you and your ex break up? What was the last straw with? Uh, the subway Bronx guy. Uh, he thinks it's because of another guy that I told him about, but it was really because he hasn't paid me. Paid, paid me back. You? Uh, all the loans. You, how many loans did you give him? Dog food. Mm, what are we talking about? Tickets. So what's dog? So oh, give well, us no, an no, example like, of the amount of money for a dog food loan. Well, no, no, no. Like in cash app. Into people's court, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> to be on that. That's my bucket list. Oh, it is? Yeah, to be on People's Court. Wow. Name a little higher. That's a bucket list? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. That in Price is Right. <laughs> you should say, you know what's on my bucket list? Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I don't know if there was one. Go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> I interrupted I, Tony. I'm sorry. I don't remember anymore. Um, how mm -hmm. did, so how much is a loan for dog food? Just a oh. ballpark will do here. It's not, there's oh, not no, like the a grand food, prize no, or anything. For right now, dog food, he owes about 80 and then for- $80. Yeah, but then we have the shots. And you then got we the have, shots? Give us a ballpark on that. That was around 150 or so. 150, so we're up to then, 230. Keep going. For the tolls when the, running the car on the way back, he was supposed to pay for. <laughs> tolls, <laughs> what do we got in tolls if you had to guess? The tolls in Austin alone was like 30. 30, we're up to 260. Through. Yeah. I would and break then, up with anybody that owed me $260. Oh, my gosh. Well, There's no doubt about it. You made the right choice. I would take their dog forever. <laughs> well, it was like I loved him, so it was like, I'll do this for you. You called my bluff on it. I'll wash the dog. But now, it was, then it became like hold the dog hostage, maybe collateral. Right. But then, so you're still bugging him about this 260 Oh, well, it's more than that, but I'm not bugging him. We broke okay, up. Okay, well, when you say more than that, are there things... You said dog food first. Because that's what he was supposed to pay um, this last time that he said he was going to pay for. He was supposed to give you $30 for dog food. No, 50 50 Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And you said that you told him about a guy. Yes. But why... What was the guy? What's the story with this guy that you told him about? Uh, the guy is Topo Chico, and, um... His name is Topo Chico? No, um, I met him at a gas station. Yeah, you met I'm, a guy at a gas station? He runs yes, trying to open my Topo Chico. What? And, um... Hold my, on, wait. You met him at a gas there, station, and what? You need uh, water? Yeah, it's Yeah, like, have some it. water. Anybody give him, give him, give her a water. Oh, this stuff's funny. That's a new one. Thank you, thank you. Please, please don't faint right now. Mm -mm. You Okay. Okay. My mouth is really dry. Okay. Thank That's you. That's good. You want to suck off Santa Claus or something? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Mm. You're a real ho, ho, ho. All right. <laughs> let's keep it moving. You don't get an overbite like that other ways. So, okay. Yeah. You're doing mm -hmm. good. Is this an Apache thing, this need for water? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. Oh, the other Indian. It's, yeah. What are, okay. the, what are the top three best tribes? Yeah. Apache. Apache. Apache number one. Number one. 
um, Telugu. Ooh. That's in India. That's a, I mean, I'm sure it's a tribe. And then um, Aztec. <laughs> we got it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that you, Dees? <laughs> and he does. Oh, my God. He's so proud of himself for the Indian <laughs> people. <laughs> what, were you waiting for it to rain? I mean, really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. This is incredible. This I is think old. you're awesome. You know that? You know that uh, about yourself? Uh, you're awesome. Thank Coming you. the first time ever, you've never done stand-up before. No, never. How awesome is that? Huh? I, th I think it's pretty good. I told myself, like... I'll try this out, and if I'm good or somewhat good, then I might Don't actually. Don't let that stop you. <laughs> I'll put effort into it, you know, and actually do an open mic. But I was like, I was like holding out. Good. So, no. any kids? Any sour uh, Apache uh, kids? No, a rescue, a little Chihuahua mutt thing. So. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, wildest no thing you've ever done in your life? Um, I crashed a Trump, like a Trump parade and then ended up in the rally hold on what what <laughs> you crashed we buried the lead a mm -hmm. trump parade mm -hmm. was this at the capitol no 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 i think it was like they're planning at the rally for the storming of the capitol it was like when um he lost the election and like all those trucks were going around yeah like the trumpers uh-huh i decided like to crash in so what Whoa. made you want to do that were you on the side of uh, right or were you against trump um, well, I did have... Oh, no one even laughed. You gotta love Texas. They're well, like, no I... joke detected. No, no, like, uh... <laughs> Nobody laughed at that. That was amazing. Yeah, no, um, I did have a blue bingo dapper on me. <laughs> okay, what? You're I answering a... questions I didn't even ask No, yet. no, no, I'm just saying okay. I, I had a blue bingo dapper, so I was like, okay. You had a blue bingo dapper, so I just put that, like, wrote some stuff on the, like, on the, like, windows, and then... What did you write? Something. Um, sorry, not sorry, you lost. Oh, um, okay. I was like, Trump says uh, that he lost the election because it was right when they announced on NPR that he did lose it. Uh-huh. And then... You uh, love NPR. Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I wrote some other stuff just saying, like, y you lost. <laughs> right. And then... <laughs> you lost. Yeah. Wow. And then um, every time they noticed that, like, I was not a Trumper, they try to squeeze me out, but it was my dad's truck, so I would just like gun Wait, it. You were ahead. in a semi truck? No, I was in his like Tundra that has like a weird bumper sticker. But anyways, that's a different thing. Sorry. God damn. I was in a truck called the retired porn star. Okay. With Biden and stuff, but yeah, I was in the parade or their, their thing. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird. All right, D Madness is furious right now. I mean, yeah, he's sorry. literally so unprofessional on the show. He's like, get this bitch the fuck out of here. <laughs> It's unbelievable the shit that he mutters, like, in mm -hmm. my ear. I don't think he knows exactly how close we are on the show. He just hears, oh, whoa, 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 he just touched me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sometimes there's a rumor going around, and Red Band mentioned this earlier, that D Madness really isn't blind. He said, that someone, he said that someone contacted him and said that every time Heidi comes out, Deep Madness is looking directly yeah. at her. <laughs> checks her. Checks her out. There's photos. I got to see this. I'm going to look more into this. You got to fucking... I can't believe that would be the most unbelievable Amazing. fucking long setup joke of all time. Please save it for Madison Square Garden. Uh-oh. What's that, wow. D? You sense it? Whoa! <laughs> What happened? What happened? Unbelievable. Uh, you know, I normally don't do this for first-time comedians, especially when their set was, you know, Whoa. you tried your hardest. But I don't know. There's something about you that I really, really like. I think you're really likable, and I yep. think that if you continue to, you know, take some of the notes that you got mm -hmm. here tonight and, uh, you know, enunciate nice, take your time. You're a little bit of a fast talker. You kind of combine your words all together and do one other thing. But if you do that and people understand what you're saying, I think that this could be something really fun for you. You are funny. I don't think you know how funny you are, but it's it's in there. That whole head thing with the Indian was unbelievable. <laughs> can you catch a joke book? Yes, I can. There you go. Oh! oh okay. There you go. Oh, wah, wah. Make some noise for Yvette Palafox, ladies and gentlemen. And that was...
is your final bucket pull of the night, which could only possibly mean one thing in the world. There goes Yvette, everybody. Yvette Palafox, there she goes, everyone. There she fucking goes, everybody. Wow, one more time for the lovely Heidi as we come to this. The final, final horizon of the show. You know what it is. Kill Tony Hall of Famer, the record holder for all time appearances, minutes, and interviews on the show. I present to you, here with a brand new minute, the legend, the Big Red Machine, the Memphis Strangler, the Vancouver Vandal, the one, the only, the Vanilla Gorilla, lights out, William Montgomery, everybody. Earlier when David tried to get in the club, they stopped him at the door and I said, do you not know who this is? This is David Spade. And the doorman said, yeah, but it's 21 and up. <laughs> David, you look great. Okay, Thank that's you, what buddy. I was going for on that one. <laughs> David Spade and Red Band have a lot in common. David only dates tens, and that's exactly who Red Band solicits. <laughs> Ten-year-olds, Red Band. That's what I was going for. Okay. Oh, yeah. And Austin Junior High School just got a new basketball coach. I think his name is John Calipari. <laughs> okay, they lost to Oakland. Ah. <laughs> People are upset that federal agents shot and killed the director of the Bill and Hillary Clinton airport last week. I don't really know what all the fuss is about because mysterious death was in his job description. <laughs> ah, abort, abort, okay, that is my time. And I'll be honest, people ask me if I'm gonna ever stop telling these Hillary Clinton jokes. I'm never gonna stop telling these fucking <laughs> Hillary Clinton jokes. She's literally killing people! That's true. Okay. That's true. That is another new set from the great William Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you do it. Nice uh, job, William. Thanks, I David. I haven't seen all the other minutes, but I'm glad I was here for this one. You're very, thank you. Yeah. You do exude confidence, I will tell you that. Yeah, and well, thank you so much. Yeah, and the joke uh, about them not letting you in, it was just about how nice you look. That's all I was, I was just trying to say you look really nice tonight. Thank That's you. What, I took no okay. offense. I understand how it works, but thank you for saying that. For sure, for sure. I understand I might be, I might get some crossfire. <laughs> <laughs> I warned David that sometimes you can be weird with the guests and that uh, you're just kidding. Well, for I sure. have to ask you now, right? How many, how many yeah. times have I seen you? Um, at least twice. Yeah, at, at least, least twice, two or three times. How does it feel to be the headliner of a no money show? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. That's why book me on Cameo, please. Yeah. William is, <laughs> William is Cameo. rich, by the way. He's the number three creator on Cameo and has no been for the way. past year. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. It's been, I genuinely appreciate anybody who's ever got one. And also, at Tony... I started oh. doing this thing oh, boy. where... Oh, you collect uh, your um, urine. Okay, that's it. It's it pretty it. blatant what, where we're going with this. Uh, yeah. Red Band here, do you want to catch us with some apple juice? I <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, I just TT'd in a bottle. I thought it was going to be funnier <laughs> than that. Ah, <laughs> shit. Here, do you want it? Tell me if it's warm. Is it warm? Oh. Check the temperature, sir. You could feel Check the bottle. Check the temperature. It's hot. Oh, wow. <laughs> It just came out of my dick, dumbass. Holy shit! And I peed all over the fucking bottle, idiot! Holy shit! Oh my god. Fuck! That's a real souvenir right there. Uh... But yeah, no, Tony, I was in Tacoma this past week, and the shows were fun. I did six shows, and they didn't have a bathroom anywhere close to the green room, so you know how much liquid I drink. It is incredible. And at the time, the, the trash cans were filled up with bottles of urine after uh, every night, so that was exciting. So That's what, what made I made you So did you get homesick, or no, with all that urine? You look like a guy yes. who collects urine. You really do. I have had it before when I was living in Los Feliz in L.A. I uh, was living in this basement thing at one point, and I had bottle, two liter bottles everywhere. I was able to fill up two liters of urine, of urine at a time, and I'd just hang on to them. 
But wow. Save it for Cameo. Yeah, thank, you, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For the- yeah. <laughs> Thanks for getting me out. It is incredible. You've been adding shows to every weekend that you do on the road. And every single thing that I hear about you on the road is ridiculous. Ridiculously 100% positive. I mean, people's minds are completely blown. The people absolutely love you. They go in with high expectations and they leave wanting more and getting a full show. You're taking Casey Rocket with you. A lot of these weekends, I can't even get Casey Rocket because he's pre booked with William Montgomery. Casey has been coming on a good amount of them. Yeah, Casey does great. A what lot a of dynamic t- duo. Yeah, yeah. It's been a lot of fun and I have you to thank for that. Sweet Tony, You're thank welcome. you so much. Not you so much, Red Band. Yeah, I thought I was going to get you to catch the bottle of urine, dumbass, but not tonight, I guess. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't ever like to get too serious or deep with you, William, but it is absolutely incredible the length of sets that you're doing and the reviews that I've been getting from these sets from fans that have seen you and stuff. We watched you go from not being able to do, what was the length of time that you would be able to do without looking at a notebook or note cards when I first met you? Eight uh, minutes? Impossible. Yeah, seven or eight minutes, impossible. Mm. And now you're doing 50 plus minutes and glancing at the notebook only at yes. the very, very end of these sets. Yes, only glancing, Tony, at the very end. And of when we first moved to Texas, <laughs> when we first moved to Texas and you gained sobriety, me and Joe Rogan were viciously on you about not looking at the notebook and using it less and connecting with the audience more. And you have flourished in that situation, correct? I am trying. Yeah, damn right I have. Yeah, you really have. It's absolutely yeah, incredible. Have. And it's not usual. We very rarely get a chance to uh, get serious. And I especially hate doing it in front of David Tell, who's about to kill me right now. No, I, uh, <laughs> I was going to ask him. He's on the road now. What's his favorite town? What do you like, dude? Yeah. Um, Spokane was wonderful. Honestly, Tacoma, I think Chicago and Tacoma, I've been the best uh, receipt. They all go, they all go well, but really? Tacoma and Chicago were wonderful. I didn't know AirTran went there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> William, what else is going on in life? What's going on? I don't know. I've literally, Tony, this is the busiest, and it's a good thing, but it's the busiest I've ever been. I'm doing yeah, the fucking Yeah, your schedule is filled, dude. It's That's totally great. filled, yeah, which is great, but just so busy now. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely great. love it. Nobody... So be careful what you wish for, the dumbass is <laughs> signing up for this shit, because it's way too much. I'm way too busy right now. It is. Be careful kind of, what you wish for. It is kind of funny. I've been thinking that lately because I fucking, I finally have life exactly how I've always wanted it. And now I have to go on the road and that sucks. <laughs> I remember when I, you know, I was on an air mattress and I was in the back seat of my car and I was on couches a long time ago. Like, man, I would just love to be on the road and the hotels were so nice and stuff like that. It gets tricky out there. Now I'm, a, you know, I, you know, we have a uh, vast sums of money, and uh, now I have to go to places. <laughs> and I was wondering. I heard earlier I didn't even get a fucking big notebook for Christmas, Tony. Yeah. Holy shit! I need What's a big that about? notebook. <laughs> oh, uh, what is that about? Uh, well, it's right around the corner. Okay, Christmas okay. is right around the corner. <laughs> Oh, there is a Kill Tony keychain. Would you like a Kill Tony keychain? Yeah, I love yeah, yeah keys. sure. Once you wow. get a house, look at that win. suit. Do you see how he caught that? I mean, it's unbelievable. You see these guys that get pulled out of the bucket. They have to fucking focus. They take it dead on. They get behind it like an infielder. That is such an insult. Yeah. Give him a keychain when he has no house or car. That really is a... <laughs> He has an, he has his own <laughs> condo and he just he has so much money that he put an escalator inside of it. He bought an escalator. You want to tell Dave about your escalator? Yeah, Dave. I don't know. Uh, uh, you have an escalator in your apartment? Yes. You was, live in a mall? It was three hundred <laughs> three hundred thousand uh, dollars. What do you think about that, David Spade? That's five cameos according to my calculation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, up charge, right. up charge. <laughs> I mean, the people love you. I did a, uh, I did a meet and greet in Boston. Who's what dumbass is fucking laughing at that? You fucking dumbass! Holy shit, that's funny to you, you fucking idiot! Wow. I've been dedicating my life to this shit, man. What the fuck have you been doing, you dumbass? I've been pissing in bottles, stupid. <laughs> Very passionate man. He's a very passionate man. 
Dustin Poirier posted on Instagram, uh, William Montgomery, never going to stop meme this week, and quoted you in what? his victory at, in the Octagon two weeks ago. No way. You watch UFC, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, sure. you do. I've seen you yeah. in a lot of those. He uh, that shit. he said his his one of his famous lines is, I'm never going to stop, and uh, Dustin Poirier literally quoted him twice after winning a UFC. It was so unbelievable that when he said it, I'm like, there's no way that has anything <laughs> to do with Kill Tony. Dustin actually met up with me and took Coma, Tony. I don't know serious? how. Yeah, I don't know how. I didn't tell you this. There's a place called the University of Puget Sound, um, and we got on campus and we both started beating the shit out of a couple of co-eds at University nice. of Puget Sound. There Literally, and this dude is mean as a motherfucker. Yeah. He was so viciously mean, but also really sweet. But sure. it was fun hanging out with Dustin in Tacoma this past weekend. William, you're an absolute fucking phenom. I mean, is there anything else we need to know about or talk about? Anything you want to plug or anything like that? If you're watching this, again, there's a little bit of a delay, but if you're in Philly, see if I'm, I'm in Philly soon, St. Louis soon. I think that, that's all I can remember. Uh, <laughs> there's more stuff. Yeah. Is there anything you're passionate about this week? Have you been eating your all... Oh, can I tell you another thing? <laughs> What? is somebody gave me a gift during one of the meet and greets this weekend that I was doing, and it was marijuana in uh, Massachusetts, and they're selling marijuana, and the name with a nice label and a nice can is All Brand Buds. <laughs> oh, that's genius. That's yeah, genius. it is genius. Oh, and people are literally like, you've become part of this crazy zeitgeist of uh, you know entertainment and comedy and everything. Um, David, maybe, maybe get me on Dickie Roberts, too. If you make another Dickie Roberts, get me on the second one. I'll put you on the short list. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'll need a love interest. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> just brainstorming. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, William, we absolutely love you. You're a fucking freak. You're the best. Good job, William. Cool. You're the best nice in the history of the show. You. Make some goddamn noise for William Montgomery, everybody. And we did it again. Another amazing drawing from the great Ryan J. E. Bell. Let's see what Chris Rogers cooked. To oh, look at that. William Montgomery over there. That, he started with a blank slate at the top of the episode, and now he's got that. David Tell, literally, I am swear to God, you can quote me on this forever. I watched him last night, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is serious. This is literally the best living stand-up comedian in the world right now, David Tell. I'm dead fucking serious, without any question. Watch Hot Cross Buns on Netflix. That is a goddamn order. That's not a plug, that is a demand. If you're a fan of the show, the Kill Tony bump, I want Netflix to see this three weeks after it comes out, which is tonight at midnight, correct, Dave? That's right, Tony. Well, seriously, Dave, I mean, you reset the bar of what the fuck a comedian is supposed to be. Literally, you are the best. Well, thank you, Tony. Can I get one of those books? Can you yes. hand me one? Yeah. <laughs> I only have little ones left, but That's yeah. That's all I need. You got a little joke book. Literally the best in the world just walked out with a little joke book. Um... Dave, we love you. It is such an honor to have you Thank here you for always. Me, Tony. And how about one more time for one of the greats of all time, David Spade? His first time on Kill Tony, hopefully not the last. Thank you so fucking much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a great crowd, super fun night. Thank you, band. Thanks to all the An these unbelievable comments. fucking unbelievable time getting to have two people that I've always loved on this show. It's unreal. Uh, thank you to Talk Space, Squarespace, Freeze Pipe. How about one more time for the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Carlos Sosa, Raul Vallejo, Fernando Castillo, Michael Gonzalez, Matt Mueling, John Dees, and D Madness. Uh, Red Band, anything else? Uh, check out the Sunset Strip, ATX.com. Love you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you at Madison Square Garden and the Forum in LA. We're coming. It's a revolution. Thank you, guys. We love you. Good night, everybody. Thank you, thank you.
The Sunset Strip Comedy Club in Austin, Texas is now open. Check out Red Band's secret show every Thursday. Go to sunsetstripatx.com for tickets.